Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language. Content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not an Welcome to the Dr. Green Thumb Show right here live on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, BeReal.TV, the home site. Welcome to it. Uh, made it through the night. I feel so lucky, and I'll explain this. Um, to my right, a legend sitting in this seat, my man Slim Jim. Yes, sir. Up wow. the Stray Cats, up in here. Amazing. Man. Amazing. I mean... It's amazing to have you here, bro. Oh, wow, it's amazing I'm here, man. Oh, yeah. Um, to his right, we got the iconic one, Eric Big Drum Bobo in the building. Yo. Eep, mofos. Yeah. L lately, it's been weep, mofos. Yeah, but man. Oh, it's, been, it's been a lot of funny things that have been going on. Man. Yeah, yeah, when it gets hysterically funny, he will cry. You know, uh, this this is a fact. You know, you know, you know when you really feel that that laughter and you know a few tears come to your eyes. We're, yeah. we're looking at a sponsorship yeah. from Kleenex. Uh, yeah, I'll he be needs down. So laughed so hard I cried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, up in the treehouse, we got Bolton Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. What's bopping, B? Bicking it. Being boo. Did you say bopping? Yep. He did. Yeah. Bopping it up, son. Bopping up in the treehouse, E. Oh, Bibbidi right. bopping. Bibbidi bopping. Boo. The concentrate king in the building. Cali yes, Blaze. Sir. Hello, everybody. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. And uh, the ballooner himself. <laughs> it's my birthday week. Nostradamus. Is it? Yeah, my birthday Saturday. E zone. Dude. Happy birthday, right. my Happy friend. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> Senor Globito. Yeah, I haven't even like El been, Global. I haven't El, even been El doing the, the whole month thing. So the, I was just like, I'm, I'm take the week only. That's what his new alias is, El Global. El Global. <laughs> He's gonna get some good lingo when I'm here, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he likes he likes you know he likes doing um the the balloons you know the Nas, the um, dental nitro, dental yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> you ever done that, Slim Jim? Not a for balloon? a while. <laughs> not for, oh, yeah, not, like it's basically not like New Orleans in the 1982. I think I'm gonna oh, say. Damn, like, I was not even. A, you were still swimming, but I remember. Bro. <coughs> I remember what it's like. But it's on that new Stallone show. Have you seen Tulsa King? Yeah, yeah. Tulsa King. Yeah, Tulsa they're King. selling. Exactly. And they're the nitrous, I haven't seen that episode. Oh, now I want to yeah. see it. Oh, you're missing. I've, oh. Only, I've only watched two, oh. dude. It's awesome. Yeah, like, it's great. It is. It's great. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. And like from the first episode, just it, it caught awesome. me. I was like, awesome. And then the, the nitrous episode. <laughs> yeah. It kind of kicks the whole thing off. It really. kicks it off. Seeing, seeing Stallone with like a balloon. <laughs> no way. No. He's Bro. taking balloons? <laughs> no, when he got, when he got he's high. In business. When oh. he got high by accident. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like, that, you know, he's, he's having a meeting with the guy. I'm not going to give it all away, but he's having a meeting. And the, the dude brings, you know, a couple of things and, and, you know, he's just dipping away at this, at this, at this dip. He's got this chips and he's like, this is incredible. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, someone asked him if he wanted to, to smoke something. He goes, oh, I never do business. Well, I'm, you know, high <coughs> or whatever. And he goes, well, what do you think <laughs> you've been eating right there? And he goes, what do you mean? This is a <laughs> <laughs> kind of like me today. <laughs> it's a great scene, and then you see him smoke out later. Like okay. he he likes the feeling, and so he starts smoking out. But they, it's pretty good. They've already uh, gotten to do a season two. Already signed yes. up for it. Yeah, season oh, two. Yeah. You know that the, the that, that story. It's like it's it's not a new story, but I think the only the reason it works so well is because it's still on playing that role in that story. Yeah. Because yeah. it's awesome. like the go, the boss who goes away from jail, you know, goes away from jail that comes back and the streets is different. It's like it's been done before several times, but Stallone just 
Yeah. Because he, it's him doing it, they, that this production. Yeah. And he's, he's actually doing. good. He's, he's good. great. Yeah. He's a movie star, man. He, yeah. His his character's like a... F- right. You he's, know, like, he's out of water. He's out of his comfort zone. Yeah. Is yeah. Michael B. Jordan? He's and, like, no. Oh. And he... He just makes it into his comfort zone. He's right. like, yo, I could do TV too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You see him more he's than in just Tulsa, like a- Oklahoma, and he's a, he's a G there too. He's man. a G there too. You know, and he's getting his crew together now. And yes. Like, you know, yes. And that's, yeah, that's kind of cool. His so, Motley crew. Yes. Because yes. it's a Motley crew. It definitely is. You know what, though, is cool that they casted old boy from Doogie Howser, Doogie's homeboy. Vinny Del Pino? Vinny yeah. Del Pino. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he, pl- he, he plays a character named Armand, who, who is, uh, who is uh, you know, one of Stallone's guys. Wow. It's he was also in The Sopranos. That's Benny. That's yes, right. He was Benny, Benny in The Sopranos. Yes, Benny he Fazio. He sure right. was. He's good. Right. He's he is. great. He is he's good really actor. good. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Like, they got a good cast. Max Casella is his name. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's awesome. Yeah, this guy. Oh, wow. He, he looks good. He put on a few years, though, but yeah. Yeah, he put wow. on some years. He yeah. looks like a guy who would tell you some good coke. Definitely. <laughs> he looks <laughs> like he could play a Mexican cartel guy, too. Definitely. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's got that Italian, yep. you know, thing jumping off. When he talks, you definitely need, you definitely know he's Italian. In bulk, though. First yeah. time I saw him was in uh, the Ed Wood movie the Ed with Wood. Johnny oh. Depp. Do you remember right. that? Yeah. He was part of the crew in that one. Wow. Wow. He's been around. Yeah. He's been around. There we go. And it's good to see him resurface like like the way... Uh, um, Doogie? Doogie, yeah. yeah. What's his name? Uh, I can't... Why Neil don't Patrick. Now, Neil pa- and Yeah, MPK. Or MPH. Yep. <laughs> I'm still. I'm. I'm. I'm now feeling the, the effects. The effects of the live resin. Rosin. <laughs> Rosin. Rosin. My, eyes, my, eyes got, my eyes feel heavy, but not like you know. So yesterday, um, I come across um, this uh, these syringes that uh, they 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 use with um, you know, full spectrum full oils. spectrum oils and stuff like this. And those are the kind you ingest, right? You could the the ones we had yesterday. You could also smoke them, like yep. if you have the right apparatus. But most people will ingest them, right? I don't like the way they taste, so I put them in a gel cap, right? And it it just so happened that he found some that he made because he's our, you know, he's the concentrate king. He makes a lot of concentrates, so he had made some. How many years back would you say it was? Two thousand nineteen. Two thousand nineteen, and I found some from you know two thousand. 16 that i had lying around right and i just got these gel caps you know that so if you wanted to make your own vitamins you can stuff the gel caps right so got his concentrates and the ones that i had found and i put them in the gel cap and three of us took them yesterday um after the show and i didn't feel it till about the show ends at four and then we do a mix show and after the mix show is when i took it um and man, it, like I didn't feel it. I, I thought, man, this is weak. I am. I'm not feeling anything. And then 9:45 hit, <laughs> and then my wife starts, you know, looking at me crazy because she she's noticing that I'm acting real silly. And what were my, you doing? I I don't remember exactly what I was doing, <laughs> but normally stuff I would not do. Wow. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's why I asked. I'm like curious. Like, what like, you like, like finicking I, with I don't, stuff? Or like? I don't clown around in the crib. You know, I, I don't dance around. I'm not giggling at things, anything <laughs> like that. And she noticed that I was doing these things last night. And then, you know, when 11 hit, I was battling the portal. You know, I was trying to stay, <laughs> I was trying to stay awake. I was totally fighting it, and I realized, damn, this hit me because, like, usually I don't get sleepy till about 12, 1230, right? Um, nah, I was battling this at, like, 1130. I found myself, like, nodding out. I was like, nope, it's time to go. <laughs> and, and my sleep was so heavy, and I woke up, like, still feeling like I was, you know hammered like that i kind of wish you would awesome you would get like that here because i'm like he said you sure he described like you remember that cheech cheech and john when he was like i just the love machine yeah yeah <laughs> like were you just walking around the house like that and like and yeah like, apparently like it's like you're just you, you, you say i'm dancing Wife, i'm like wifey was like what's wrong with you <laughs> but that would have been funny. like i'm high as i'm high that as right. funny to to see I yeah, she man. thought it was funny. She was laughing at me the whole damn night. Wow. <laughs> that does sound funny, dude. Do you, do you have any funny experiences that, you know, either when you did smoke or or any kind of drugs with a hallucinogenic? <laughs> oh, I was... 
<laughs> he's, he's like, I don't know where to, where do I begin? <laughs> I don't know. Listening to the first Cheech and Chong record when it was like hot off the presses after smoking some pot. I don't know. We've been. I, I think it's advanced a lot. Since oh, it has. Last time I smoked, mm-hmm. smoked anything over 30, 35 years ago is when I um, did it last. And I, I, I think in and. This would have been in New York when you were dealing with dirt lumbo and dirt lumbo, you know, yeah, that that kind of stuff, sticks and seeds and Mexican. Was that Mexican the name of a person? And, no, no, that was the name of the dirt. No, that the was the name of the weed. weed. Yeah, yeah. Dirt lumbo, dirt. dirt, dirt lumbo. That sounds nasty, bro. Because exactly. yeah, it was, I don't it was dirt it was with strong. a lot of lumber. Yeah. yeah, and it was supposedly from Colombia, but it was like a lot of dirt. And the, so I, I don't know if it was that strong. As it is now, I think you got a lot of science involved now. It's oh, something, yeah. <laughs> you know, people know what they're doing. Yeah, I think people know how to promote all the the awesome aspects of a, of a cannabis plant now. Whereas people back then were just guessing and you know just watering it and not knowing that that you know there was things to be able to make the plant so much better. I mean, but that that was the case for a lot of us for a long time till till people got their cultivation game together. It was a lot of mids out there. It didn't actually start going up in potency until they got rid of the seeds. Mids. So once they got rid of the seeds, the plant more than doubled because the once you take away the fertilization, that's what makes them swell yeah. up. It was the sticks and the seeds that made the business because that's how oh. you had to make the weight. We had a triple yep. beam scale. I, yeah. I, I, triple beam. I knew the yep. game a little bit, you know? <laughs> and it was... Yeah, <laughs> it, really, the That's thing that shocks the me the most is 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 that it's not a big deal anymore. Yeah, we're talking 1970s for, for me in New York, and it was a it was a big deal. Yeah, big. I mean, deal. if you got a dime a bag of pot you on you, jail. you were in trouble. Do you, yeah. you still live out there? No, no, I live here a long time. And, and what's I came here in 1981. Oh, so but before that, I, I I grew up. And, and you know, Long Island. And you know what's crazy is that a, in New York now, it's it's changed that people are like openly smoking right out in the street. More than here. In front of police officers, more than here in California. Like he said, it's it's the craziest thing. Because, I mean, when we started going in there in the 90s, when we put out, put out our first record, even, even just before then, because we were going there, you know, with our demos and, and, and uh, doing all the promo work, um... Yeah, it was a big deal. You got caught out there, boom, you're jail. going straight to right. jail. And yeah. you, you had to be very um <laughs> elusive oh. and and hide with the shit. Yep. Um oops, there it goes for me. All right, I got it. Um and, but now <laughs> like to, to go that's that's because I cursed. We got a thirty minute challenge that oh. we don't curse for the first thirty minutes as as it doesn't the apply to you. It doesn't you apply go, to you. you I'll blow it. zero Curse for us. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> So I violated, but um, yeah, it's it's a crazy thing to see that. Like, and I'm not from New York. I've always been someone who, you know, like, were you know, as a as a hip hop fan before I was doing it, I always looked up to the artists that came out of there because I mean, it was they're they're the ones who set the genre off in the first place. So New York to me was like mecca. So mm-hmm. like going out there and experiencing the whole thing, and then making friends that would become like family it, it, it was everything but to see those changes on how it got cleaned up from where it was when we started going there to to where it is now to like being a- able to smoke freely it's crazy i can't imagine once they throw their first 420 event or something how crazy it's going to be out there yeah, I mean, just to think the amount of people that had a they had it already had a bad life because of a dime bag or something back then in the you know the sixties, seventies. Yeah. I was, you know, even knew some all guys through the that, yeah. until right now, it stayed the same until like four or five years ago. Really, anything if you had a bowl with residue, jail. Really, yeah. still it never huh. changed. That I'm very now. happy about. You know, yeah. But now you could be like a you know how they have the ice cream man out here like yep. you can get one of those trucks decorated like the Cheech and Chong van and and uh, delivery. Deliver and like nobody has a problem with it because it's like a food truck. Yeah, yeah. There's bigger things to worry about, I think. You know? Yeah, sure is. It's major. I mean, when you think about the fentanyl problem right oh. now, I mean, the, the last week they caught they caught a, a shipment that. Uh, they, oh damn it! I thought that, I, I said a shipment. Yeah, but I did, <laughs> that was an accident. But I did say that earlier. Yeah, yeah. I owe one right here, so help me out um, with it. one. Um, Here's the brand new cuppy cups right here. Um, they got it. They they popped off a shipment. I don't remember what city, but they said they found enough fentanyl to to kill every American in the United oh. States. 
How much uh, fentanyl did they find that they could estimate well, that? Why do they need so much? Well, it only takes like micrograms to kill a person. Yeah, so like where are you storing yeah. the rest of it? If, like, oh man. Yeah, it's it, really it's bad. crazy. They, it, they had a they had a um they had these uh two cops on the news last week where the female cop somehow got exposed to just a little bit of it. Like, Have you seen her in a seizure? Yeah, right. she breathed her in. That She breathed in just a little bit, like, it, as as she was trying to apprehend the person and, like, you know, that had it. And she went into a seizure immediately. They had to give her that Narcan stuff and, and uh, snap her out of it. You could buy that on eBay now. What, Narcan? Yeah. Man, Shout I'm out Jeff Bezos. <laughs> it's a trip. People that are dealing with fentanyl, I don't know if they they're not into repeat business. Huh? Oh, it basically they don't care. They don't care. It's like you know, take them out and then you know the next one. That's why you can't buy like That's any it. pharmaceutical knockoffs these days to anything because you just don't know if it's in there. That like a lot of people are dying from that. Like instead of because they can't get the the prescription from their doctor, they're you know they're going to their homie to get the knockoff version, and who knows if that. Yeah, a lot of Xanax. A lot of Xanax stuff. that's on the street is fake Xanax. It's laced with fentanyl. And you got people who are doing coke who are then trying try not they're not trying to do any type of opiate at oil. And they're putting fentanyl in coke. Like, you know, yeah. coke heads aren't searching for that high. No, Whereas hell no. That's the last through, thing right? they want. And what's the goal or the I end game or the That's what everybody's trying to do. Depopulation. The, yeah. Does it probably all lead back to that? Like, most I, I, I think you know. I think it's one of those things where it's like thirty years from now you're gonna look at it. It's like you know how like now everybody's like, oh yeah, oh well, damn, the government did provide everybody with crack to you in know, the eighties. Yeah, to <laughs> make sure all these communities fall apart. I was like, I feel like, hey man, like you guys really can't put a stop to this. Well, when they find you know, like, like, when, when they wow. find people that, that that are making the fentanyl wherever they get it from, they'll probably charge them with with murder or attempted China. murder. Ninety, well, yeah, ninety percent right. of it's manufactured in China. Yeah, and now they're starting to manufacture it and synthesize it in Mexico just so they don't have to ship it so what they do is they ship the raw ingredients from China to Mexico and then they synthesize it mm. in Mexico that's what they're doing yeah they could stop that and they don't even they ain't, they ain't trying. trying to try they ain't it, even trying there's to more try. money in trying yeah. you know than actually there's more stop. money in programs for it right it ramps up a war an excuse to ramp, to have another war on drugs again and then you're just like oh there's a war against fentanyl now I'm like hey you guys created it <laughs> They sure did. Yeah, it says in 2022, they seized 50.6 million pills laced with fentanyl and 10,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. Right. Oh, my So it wasn't actually God. one seizure. I think they said basically in 2022, they seized enough to kill everyone, right? Yep. That's crazy. That's nuts. Did you take your shot? I did well. I didn't. I'm not shooting. He's sipping it, man. That's yeah, blow. This is Johnny well, Walker, I was, baby. You I was, sip, Johnny. Well, That's, I was going to take a shot with you. But just sip it. It's suck on it, baby. <laughs> That's Johnny Walker Blue, son. He just wanted to. It's meant to enjoy. Yeah. All right, I, I, I stopped. I'm just saying. Yo, you. I wanted to ask you about uh, your drum style because yeah. I, remember, you know, when I first saw the Stray Cats, and you know, I'm a, I'm a drummer, and I never thought mm -hmm. about standing up to play. <clears throat> Why stand up? What was your thing? Or do you never stand? I mean, there's not a picture of you sitting down on a drum set. <laughs> well, I sat down when I learned. We learned. All of us really like a traditional style of playing. We took lessons and, uh, you know, and the, um, can read and write and all that. And uh, we wanted to start at a band uh, when we started the band to do something completely different. And we had just gotten turned on to rockabilly music. We had found out about rockabilly music through through the channels of like the '70s rock that would have been around. There was to see a Rolling Stones record, and there's a, a C. Berry next to it. Who's that? That's Chuck Berry. Uh, they find a Beatles record that had B. Holly next to it. Who's that? That's Buddy Holly. And you slowly find these things out, and we got to the source of these um, uh, la, la, really, I guess, original American rock and rollers, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis. El and then when I landed on Elvis Presley, we were completely taken over by it, how we looked, how we, we just loved everything about it. I had hair down here. The next day, I got it all cut off. I changed how I dressed. I changed how I thought. Everything. I was about 18 years old. And the other two are having the same experience. And let's form a band. Because we were all in bands around Long Island. And uh, we got heavily into it. And we came across a, uh, a group called Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps. You'd probably know Bebop Alula if you yeah. heard it. That was their yeah, that's big, right. That was their big, big hit. And uh, uh, we 
we found some pictures on the on the back of the album where there uh, the guy was standing up playing the drums, and his name is Bebop Harrell, and he's now a friend of mine. He's an old guy, but uh, he was a hero to me, and and um, he was standing up playing the drums. He had a snare drum and a pair of brushes, and he was standing up. So we thought, wouldn't that be great? Let's have have me stand up in our band. We've got an upright bass. We got a hollow body guitar. I'll stand up. It'd be cool. And let's take it one step further. We'll put everyone across the front. So that's what we do. All, all of us across the front of the stage with me standing. And with a stripped down drum kit, because it was a bit of a statement at the time against, it was very big drum kits around back then. This mm. would have been 1979. Yeah, everybody ramped up. Yeah. And just had a lot of stuff, which as a drummer, <laughs> cool. All, all drummers dig all all other drummers, as you know, it's mm. just everybody does it a little bit differently. But at the time, it was my statement against all the stuff, which I couldn't afford a transportator on anyway. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and can you really play all those pieces in in the set? Yeah, I mean, some of it's just for looks, right? It, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess you can't hit them all all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, but so it was a statement, and then years later, like a couple years later, after we had a success, we got a very nice chance to meet all of our kind of idols along the way. And one was Dickie Harrell, and I told him, dude, you inspired me to stand up and play the drums. He said, Slim Jim, I only did that in a photograph. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to like go all the way and stand in the front and do the whole... So it was really... Really, because we were leading our lives off these, the you know, the blurry pictures on the back of a few albums that we managed to track down, you know? So it was... Um, that's, that's crazy. But, you know, that was the... We really wanted to do something different, and at the time, that was really as different as you could get. Hey, that crazy how the photo birthed a, a, a new style of drumming. For sure. Like, and, and probably no one else had thought to do that, right? Yeah, no Up one at the time. Point. I think if you go back, maybe historically, it's easier to find these things now. But at the time, when, when I started doing this, I had no other reference point. We had this kind of... You know, a couple of photographs and the others thinking, yeah, try it. That's a great idea. Let's do have the least amount of drums that we can get because we were going for the least amount of stuff you could have. Minimalist. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. We had, you know. And you can, you guys did it. keep it simple, but it, it was always smacking. I mean, with the stand-up bass and, and you on the kit and him on the big old piece. Stretch guitar. I mean, yeah. It, you know, there's a certain style of playing that, you know, that, um, that you learn in the trio. And with a uh, rockabilly, there's a slap bass. Yeah, yeah. it's very percussive. So it, yes, it is. Yeah. And as a drummer, you find the kind of the places to go in between that. Right. And then is all great you know, music. You lay back on top of a soloist and allow the soloist to be on top of the right. foundation that you've. And Brian is an you know, amazing soloist, and we had a great rhythm section. So that's a trio. You really have to have that foundation for the soloist to go out. You know, as far as he wants to go, and knowing that is you guys his were, foundation of sound. You you guys were basically layering the sounds and filling in the different pockets. Yeah, like uh, positively. Sort of, yeah, and that's that's not easy playing standing up because, like in in our set, um, I, I I started uh, playing this uh, machine called a Hand Sonic, and uh, basically I didn't have the drum set up there at the time. Uh, but I had a foot pedal and I had a hi hat and I was playing the drums standing up, mm. and the model was you, no. because I never saw anyone else stand up, you know, playing drums. And it's not easy. It's not, you know, it's a different, it's a different animal. It's a different animal. When you're in your twenties, you didn't care so much, right? No. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, at, <laughs> now at our age, yeah. your hips trying and your to, knees. Yeah, is, I'm trying to sit down. Yeah, I still stand up though. I, I'm doing. still standing up, damn near the whole time on stage. Yeah, I think you can do it. Did you guys got, helps keep you fit too? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you guys all agree as a band? You guys all have to have a cat. <laughs> no, you know something. I think all these years later, I'm the only one that does have a cat. I was gonna ask, like, I was, how many of you guys actually did have cats? You know, with a name like that. You know, back then, none. I think the name came from every. Uh, there was a, a, you know, like cat was an expression for, for like dude, a, a cool dude was like a, a cat. Dude, yeah, you know, like hipster uh, lingo. Cool cat, cool dude. And yeah. um, we were oh, we were called the Tom Cats at one point, and then uh, our story takes us to um, to England. 1980, when after we played the clubs in New York for a year, a lot, you know, we were 
You guys broke. We there got first. good at it, you know, for yeah. a long time. And then uh, woodshedded there in New York for a long time, and then and then went to uh, England to make it. Right. Here's our adventure. We got off the, you know, the plane, got through immigration somehow, which they didn't want to let us. We got through. Now what do you do? And so we spent a, maybe six months knocking on doors, being homeless, couch surfing, meeting a few people that liked us, you know, just along the way, and uh, you know, played enough gigs that you know, like a buzz started about it. So, and then we needed, the name wasn't fitting, Tomcat, we felt like stray cats, we had nowhere to live, we were in this kind of funny place. It was fitting. We, like yeah. a few people were being nice to us, and not let us alone. so we really fit the definition of stray cats, and the, you know, the name really just kind of fit. That's, that's crazy, because it was almost like the same path, like, as Jimi Hendrix, right? Very similar, yeah. Like, because Jimi Hendrix was doing a bunch of stuff here that wasn't resonating, and it, his, I think it was his, the band name was even Jimmy James and the Blue Flames yeah. for a second. Yeah. Then he goes to, to England to sort of, like, figure it out, and he meets up with the other guys, and then they change the name to the experience. Yep. And then they blow up there, and then get acceptance here because they blew up there. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's and that's that's sort of the same thing that happened with you guys. That's the same thing that happened to us. We um uh there see things in England and and back then news could spread very quickly cuz they had five or six music magazines every right. week which you guys probably knew the uh, you know the NME and yeah. the Melody Maker and there there was like five of them that came out every week and they were like mini bibles that everybody had to know everything that was going on. So they needed news, they needed, and the fact that we were from New York, we were homeless, we were these three guys who wore pink suits and had our hair this high, and had, had nowhere to live, but, you know, rock stars were coming down to the gigs because they had heard about all that just play. And so, so there was a few labels interested in it then. And then we, uh, things could, were kind of able to happen a bit quickly. When they found us, they signed us, we did the record, we did, and then we, we played around Europe Australia, we went to a couple times. Japan, a couple times. Europe, quite a few times. England, quite a few times. For two years before we came back here, and by that time, MTV had started, and we were made for MTV in a funny way. Yeah, it pretty had a much book attached to it, and we already had a couple videos that we had done in England. So they needed content when MTV started. Got to remember, it's kind of a funny thing. They needed videos. They didn't they have did. enough. Videos. They needed content. You know, yeah, they really did. It. So, so we. Um, you know, a few things lined up. We came back to America, got the American part of the record contract sorted out. MTV was on, and we just did it again. We hit the road and went in a van and, like, played 11 shows in a row for, you know, for a couple of years, when, you know? When you guys came back to the States, did people think you were from England because that's where you guys broke first? Yeah, a little bit. And kind of musically, it, it, it came around the same time as a lot of those English groups from the 80s. Right. Like, and it kind of had a look. The Culture Rock Club and you know, a lot of these groups that came out, we were played next on MTV or on the radio was the next thing. And the rockabilly look you guys had. Yeah. Too, you know. Because still nobody next door to them looked like this. No. Right? And was, like when we started, that was half of our thing was to go and make it as musicians. And the other half was we were like evangelizing rockabilly. Everyone's got to know this. This is American music. You guys had American great. American stuff. And we got, want everyone to know. You know, guys had right? great hair, man. Yeah. <laughs> got to tell you. Yeah, it's still here under my hat. Yeah. <laughs> I, but it's there. I had to shave all mine off, but I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I remember in, in high school, in high school, uh, you know, they were they we had the the rockabilly crowd, and in our dances, the high school dances, yeah. they were playing freestyle, you know that kind of stuff. And then they had the little rockabilly section. I, I when these guys came out, I remember yeah. that there was like a, a a a rush of guys like that were maybe doing rock at first or some other thing, mm. and then they flipped to doing like rockabilly style music, and you seen dudes that were initially playing a, a traditional bass or it depends i guess which which ones came first i don't right, know but right. like they flip to a stand up right and and start trying to do rockabilly style music like you guys influenced a lot of people to come back to that sort of genre well that's that's something that now you could look back as a very kind of proud of that we did help this music last another generation at least you know influence them it was great dancing. It turned on to it. Yeah, that's what it really was, I yeah. think. And um, uh, we, we, that, you know, rockabilly music and what influenced rockabilly music is stuff that we went back and found, learned, like, who did Elvis like? 
who did Chuck Berry listen to? Right. Who did these? And 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 you get like the the step right before that was what they called jump blues, which was guys like Amos Milburn, Roscoe Gordon, uh, Tiny Bradshaw. This is like the original kind of. It wasn't quite rockabilly, but it was uh, but it was rock and roll. They called it. Ike Turner was in a group uh, with a guy named Jackie Brenston who did the first. They call it first rock and roll, so called Rocket Eighty Eight. It was basically more up tempo. And aggressive blues, Yeah, right? not jazz guys who were like a different thing. Right. But it wasn't like Delta blues. It was like urban blues, like right. rockin' blues it was called. And yeah. like like a few cats out there, like Elvis Presley, he heard that and he heard the Grand Ole Opry. And, and that's where it went. made that, you know, that the Big Bang. Yeah, thing. that's where jailhouse rock comes from. Yeah. And, and, and that type of thing, mixing, you know, mixing genres. And uh, we just were... Um, you know how I found out about it was just just a beautiful thing because I never knew about it. I would I was a rock guy, you know, yeah. but luckily I was young enough and heard it at the right time to have it really have it become a major part of our lives. You know, the, you know how like the whole look you guys had came with like obviously you have to shop at certain places to have like that outfit. You know, mm -hmm. even now like. Was there certain cars you guys preferred to drive at the, at the time? I would imagine it's like oh, old yeah. school hot rod. You'd be like, "Oh man, this is what I'm driving." Yeah, um, Brian had a '57 Chevy. Nice in New York when I came. The, the only thing I ever wanted uh, was a Corvette, and I still have the same car that I always had, 1961 Corvette, which I still oh, have damn. to this day, which I got with my first, you know, royalty check money. You know, it's. It's eighteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Watch Barrett Jackson. You can't get a Corvette of eighteen thousand anymore. But um, but yeah, that that's like another part of the of uh, of it really. That now has grown. It's bigger than ever, I think. But there's a there's a bit of a culture that goes along with that music, like the car culture. Yeah, fashion, yeah, that's uh, why I asked. Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. even you know architecture, like you know what someone's apartment's going to look like, kind of. You know they're going to yep. have a leopard skin couch and maybe yeah. some type of juke. It's, it's like you know what the kind of car it's, or motorcycle that yeah. they might drive. Yeah, it's a lifestyle kind of Absolutely. choice as well as a uh, you see them you know, at diners. Taste music. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real, like yeah, they'll, have, 50s, 50s they'll have events yeah. if there's a, if there's if for all the you know like little gems of diners that are left in America. You'll see if they're certified. If they have events, and they'll be, they'll be, they'll pull up in bikes. They'll pull up in old school cars, and there's all these fools that just dress from that era, and they, you know, they got like the Keep all the girls alive. look like Betty Page and stuff. You know, like it, it's. I'm like Damn. some places be having uh, the sock hops and all them kind of like fifties like dances and yeah. stuff, and yeah, I mean, the, I think it's bigger than ever. It's I mean, there's not one group that I know that's really. After the Stray Cats uh, leading it all, all, but there, I, I think the whole movement is bigger. Yeah, like they have like festivals and events all over that didn't exist when we, when we, you know, started. There was maybe like greasers who were like car culture kind of guys, yeah. but not rockabilly so much. But I think now it's, I think it's bigger and better. Yeah, definitely, definitely expanded it. Um, and that's that's what's great about it is that it inspired others to like carry it on. Exactly. Now there's one more thing in the soup. I mean, you got no excuse for not writing a great song these days. <laughs> you got even because now you got that in there too. Yeah. You know. And you, you guys Cypress had Cypress Hill, and you got the Straight Cats to choose from. Which when we started, we didn't have that, right? Exactly. We had <laughs> our choices were very limited. I mean, there's I mean, there's always a lot of music. It's just that it, you know, it's subjective to you know what you might like to listen to, what's available, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, now, I mean, there's just so much available to listen to. And, and you know, you just got to be open to it because it's out there for you. you know? I think it's great, man. There's so much out there that you can't find something you like. And you can't find two things you like and maybe combine them and turn it into one new thing. Right. <laughs> it's, it's certainly available. What do you find yourself listening to in, like, like your off time? Like, just your chill mode um, that people wouldn't necessarily think would be in your library oh um lately just uh, i i found everybody knows these things except me a punk rock group called the muffs that were a girl muffs. group that were yeah. fantastic and i didn't really know that much about them and i <laughs> i i work on sirius xm for little steven's underground garage sirius xm channel 21 i'm a dj on that channel and i and i go back and i gotta because i could be in my comfort zone of knowing i love 10 records and 
pretty much playing those 10 records, Desert Island Discs, no problem. Right. But I tried to find new rockabilly groups, and I also still am on my same quest to find out who influenced the artists that I like. Right. You know, so, um, so I still have that quest, and I still come up and find, you know, rockabilly songs from the 50s that, that I never heard before. Yeah, it's crazy when you do that kind of research, like, you know, researching the artists that influenced the artists that that you you know yeah. you were inspired by like Led Zeppelin for instance right uh, Robert Plant was influenced by this artist um, I can't remember the name of the group but they recorded a Zeppelin well what what Zeppelin one of the songs that Zeppelin made famous mm-hmm. and you could see you know that Robert Plant got his style from this particular guy I can't remember what the hell the name of the group was but. Like they had a, a similar uh, vocal tone, right, and delivery, and uh, yeah, it, it, but but it's a trip because you wouldn't really know this until yeah. you hear him talk about yeah. this particular group and w- what they meant to him, and then others that were like his friends yeah. that talked about you know like yeah he used to listen to this group and this is sort of where he got <laughs> his. He's and, a big rockabilly guy, Robert Plant. Yeah, he's come to see us. I can't even tell you times over the years and he was into a guy named Ral Donner who was like a kind of like an Elvis yeah guy that was signed by a label to to do those style of records and um a lot of those guys especially the um the um you know the English cats they were you know Keith Richards when we first met him said hey man all we did was sell your music back to you yeah they listened to Muddy Waters and, and exactly all those guys Holland and the wolf. wolf and yeah exactly right so so they put a spin on it so so I think it's possible to you know you listen to that that exists yeah right the original exists you know the wolf exists the stones exist now Nirvana exists Cypress Hill exists the Stray Cats exist there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of things to put in the soup, I think. So it's a one happy big, to do our part. One big gumbo. Yeah, oh, I so. think so. Man, when was uh, the last time that the Street Clats played together? Clats. The last Clats. time we Clats. played Clats. We did uh, uh, was 2019. We did the Greek Theater. That was our last show so far. Nice. Up up till now, that was that that was our last show, and that was our 40 year. Nice. Anniversary, forty-year anniversary. Damn, that's yeah, on that. because there was a a lot of talk about doing it in twenty twenty because the first record came out in nineteen eighty, but we had spent nineteen seventy nine working very hard playing playing in the garage and playing in a lot of bars in New York and so um, so we insisted that we wanted to do it two thousand nineteen because nineteen seventy nine. So it turned out that we were, I think we were right. If we waited till twenty twenty, <laughs> I don't think we would have geared it up again. So. Um, so we did a record that did very well, and and we did a world tour in 2019. Awesome. So, nice. That, is that awesome. was the last So last you guys are still, like, kind of cool with each other, or everything is... Yeah. Like, I, I, like everybody, I don't know how much anybody <laughs> talks to each other, you know, on Christmas. I was going to ask that. And, but, uh, but everyone lives in all f- parts of the country, but, uh, but there's a certain you know how it is, the thing with a yeah. band. There's a brotherhood kind of vibe yeah. to it that you don't have to hang out with them every day. But, but you know the love is there. And something, yeah, and you, something that you did, you, only the three of you were there when you did that, you know, you made those records and you... You think you know. the Eagles send each other Christmas cards? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go fuck them away. Oh, man. <laughs> no. No. Only if it says, fuck you on yeah, it. Go suck your mother. <laughs> <laughs> They're They're I always say, when was the last time Joe Perry and Steve Tyler had lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, right? <laughs> the last time. It's like, let's just go make some fucking money. Yeah. <laughs> Those fools will probably still fight at that. No matter how old you are. Oh yeah, no. They'll, they'll, they'll be like, I, I the only do. time they probably <laughs> communicate to each other is on stage. And it's a beautiful thing with all sorts of groups. I think have a similar, similar. Yeah, that, I would think. Like you know, they can't stand to be in the same room, but they get on that stage and it's magic. That's more the case I've heard than anybody hanging out. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 let's have a band picnic. I haven't really heard too, <laughs> too many of those. <laughs> and I think every every band that's notable, you know, that, that that has had some success, has had this kind of, you know, th- these these types of relationships where it's sure. up and down roller coaster, and some just ir irrepla- ir um how do you say it um ir 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 uh <laughs> cannot cannot be fixed. You know what I mean? There's just some relationships cannot be fixed. Irrevocable. 
Irreconcilable. Uh, irreconcilable. There you go. That's I'm just putting it out there. Irrevocable. It wasn't ir- irrevocable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th- I, th- I think some relationships can be mended and others can't, but the business is too good to fuck it up over personal shit. So it's, you know, with some bands, it's all about business more than it is about, yeah, you know, we love to do this and we're making money and, and we're successful. And other uh, others, fortunately for those groups have both like they get along and you know they're doing well and that's a rarity and you got to embrace when you have that yeah yeah um but it's tough because every group that has any success goes through some sort of shit it just happens the only you know even a solo artist they're gonna go through it too with their with their squad with their people sure even even, even if they're not sharing a spotlight with someone they're gonna go through some some of that in a different way, but like with a band, you know, it's all the different personalities, different egos, and all that to to contend with, man. And you know, when you're like a group like the Eagles, you got how many members in this band? Six, seven, something. Yeah, how many original ones? I think there's only. Well, yeah, now there's only what three? Three, I think. Yeah. Originals. What they died or they quit? One died, and. I don't know about the others. And I think a couple of the early like original guys, I don't know if they ever rejoined. Right. I that mean, could they, technically be original members. I think yeah. they're... They got their feathers plucked. Their original yeah. originals were uh, Glenn Don, Fry and... Uh, Don? Don Henley. Don Henley, yeah. Henley and then yeah. Glenn Fry, is, uh, yeah. he passed. Yeah. yeah uh, See, like in that photo, Bernie Ledden yeah. and Randy Meisner, they're capable of being in it, I think. And then the guy on the far right, Don Felder, he's a, he's around. Yeah, he's Don Felder, yeah. He's not, I don't know, he's not in it. And he was the first one to join, but that was the four original, and then he joined to augment. And Joe, uh, wait. And then Bernie Led and the guy on the left, he left, and that's when Joe Walsh joined. Yeah, Joe Walsh. Yeah. I'm a rock nerd, man. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> oh, nice. That and the New York Yankees, I could tell you that. I can appreciate things like this. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who, who was your influence on drums and stuff like that? Um, well, I, when I first started, I thought I wanted to be a jazz guy, and I realized I wasn't maybe good enough to be a hardcore jazz guy, but Art Blakey was one of my favorites. Art Blakey. Max Roach. Papa Joe Jones. Philly Joe Jones was Philly my, Joe. one of my favorites, really. And I, I love Billy Cobham and Tony Williams, and, and you know, but, uh, but I also dug rock guys. Ringo and Charlie were big big influences on me you know Ringo is my hero I think oh hero um but Ringo and Charlie were very big on me and then when I got into rockabilly I discovered a few of the drummers like Gene Vincent's guy Dickie Harrell Bebop Harrell was a was a was a big one and uh, I think I had played with Elvis DJ Fontana like the drum roll that starts Hound Dog is still like way up there on the best licks ever for me but drummers are funny and you kind of contest to this it, 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 everyone likes each other i mean i love neil pert i love john bonham and it wouldn't make a sense to to anyone who's not a drummer yeah but you got two drums up there and he's one of those one but yeah but we're all kind of you know what's drummers. crazy yeah is, is that guitar players like they can't stand each other sometimes They're like they look at each other as as rivals but drummers they all love each other yeah that's what it's that weird community like that. that i dig they're all on beat being in the, they are the heartbeat. The drummers are the yeah. heartbeat of the song. I think we all know that unless you have a good drummer, you yeah. cannot get any further. No. You yeah. cannot get one inch further unless you have a good drummer. Yeah, if you, you have it. a good band, you have a good drummer, then you could have a sax player who hits a wrong note yeah. or a guy who sings a little bit flat or a guitar player who hits a claim. Once in a while. You can have that and yeah. survive. You cannot have a bad drummer and survive. Not survive, no. No fucking can. way. Yeah. Th- yep. This is facts. These are facts. Salute to the drummers, man. Yeah, there yeah, have yeah, been yeah. great Shout out ones. To you, Bobo. you know, that's why sometimes, you know, if I hit something crazy, I get a look from B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if or, I hit something crazy, I try to be really like creative. Or if he missed <laughs> like, something, you know, if I missed something, or if he missed a hit, and all of a sudden I get this look from like you know, he's on the mic, and all of a sudden he looks over at. <laughs> like man i mean like real evil like so uh yeah do it twice then it's jazz yeah, yeah. It's twice as does jazz. he tell you after the show 
Oh yeah, he'll just, tell me after. Like, hey, he'll, 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 he'll say, um, "Yo, what was that?" <laughs> the, uh, um, <laughs> let me ask you something. You remember? <laughs> do you remember that part you forgot? <laughs> <laughs> now this does not happen often it doesn't happen but when it does you know he 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 takes said, it to the limit hey bobo <laughs> what happened to the splash at minute 231 <laughs> no. oh no the time when i i hit i hit my um <laughs> my, my, my knuckle, my finger on the rim of the oh, snare drum. Oh. I, you know the pain, oh, right? Oh, yeah. So we're playing, and all of a sudden, you know, we're doing the show, and then I hit it, and I want to yell out, but I don't. <laughs> but the snare hit was really weird. Well, because it was my my knuckle, finger. my finger, right? This guy turns around and looks over at me like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, I'm that damn near about to bleed over here. Like, look, you know, listen what happened. Oh, that's what it was. He was about to go oh. off on me and everything. It's a, it's a blessing and <laughs> curse. You couldn't go like this, it though. All. So, all. Man, I mean, no, you during the show, I mean. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he's like, I, I can't. It's only eyes. You'll fall off beat. Man, I, I almost like, you know, did the dog yipe. <laughs> you know, during the show, I would have, you know, that, that hurt. But, like, it's the same thing. Like if he says something, he does a wrong lyric, and oh, then yeah. and he looks back at me just to see if I'm looking, <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, <laughs> yeah, I got you. Mm-hmm. I'll okay. check myself too. I already know. I'm, I'll look back at his stuff. No, no, he's looking back at me for confirmation because he knows that he fucked up. But then he looks back to see if I caught it. And I'm looking at him like, mm-hmm. hello. Yep, you fucked yeah, up. You did. Yeah, you fucked up. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I, look, when I look back after I fuck up, is to make sure that he caught that I fucked up because yeah. I already know. I could feel the look on the back of my head, so I look back and sure enough, he's like, <laughs> "I heard that." Yeah, I'd be listening. We, hey, I don't know if you guys um, ever did this, probably not, but like the way we used to to catch each other out there like that. So like, if one of us made a mistake. We'd all be having um, yellow bandanas on us, like a, you know, like referees at football flag <laughs> on the play. Yeah, yeah. So whenever one of us would fuck up on stage, boom, the flag would come down. <laughs> and I was getting these guys left and right. Ah, uh, missed a hit here. Ah. Oh, missed a verse there. Ah. I was getting them throughout this tour, right? And then uh, we were playing the Stone Pony in New Jersey, and. Uh, <laughs> It's a vibe, you know. As we park, that's uh, right. That's the boss's territory. Boss is there, the yeah. boss is it, Mr. Springsteen and Mr. Bon Jovi and you know Mr. Sinatra. Sinatra. Yeah, it's their backyard. Um, so we're doing, you know, insane in the brain, which we've done hundreds of times, and out of nowhere, I lose the verse. Like I'm like <laughs> in the middle of it, and one of the drops comes, and I'm I'm supposed to come back in on the beat, and I lose it. And I look back, and all the flags are coming. (laughs) We were all waiting for this moment. Even our crew guys had flags. They were coming from side stage, back of the stage, you know, damn near front of stage. Like the Indiana Jones? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Great. We got him. We got him. Got him. (laughs) Yeah, the yellow flags rained on me that day. They were waiting. But these, you know, these are the... The little games we play on uh, each other, you know. Keep it interesting. Keep it interesting. Yeah. Now what we do is, uh, you know, if somebody messes up, you just give them the James Brown little dance. We you know, give them the James Brown, the yeah. mashed potato. Mashed potato. <laughs> Bring it. You know. You ever seen the mashed potato? <laughs> no. look, look up the mashed potato by James Brown. He's to fine everybody, bolted. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there you go. But <laughs> but we give everybody a signal that they that they messed up. And sometimes I'll even I have to give it to myself because you know <laughs> when I mess up it's you know it's I'm I'm glad you don't do the fines that that'll hurt yeah the fines are hurt <laughs> the, the fines are hurt you know after one you know <laughs> who, who wants to have to pay up like a hundred dollars in fines because you messed God up you know? have you found the mashed potato all right this is this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> See, DJ Lord, when he messes up, he knows not to look over my side. He knows not to look at <laughs> him. We're doing the mashed potato oh, right Because there. I'm looking right dead at him, I and I'm that. doing this on stage. The, re- the real way he does is it is he holds his belt buckle and does a little yeah. shimmy. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what we do to each other. We don't do this one. This is this is a different yeah. version of the mashed potato. I get the, but he I holds get the his, idea. There he goes right here. This is, 
But this is almost it, right? Yeah, there. Almost, almost. Yeah, yeah don't just, want that. just the hips. Yeah, yeah just the hips right there. So there's people in the audience that are probably like, "What are these guys doing what are, up there? What are, what are these guys doing?" Because <laughs> we're not doing the mashed potato right by any means, but <laughs> we're doing a version of it. I mean, did you guys have any special thing like if you messed up, then you guys looked at each other like kind of you know made a joke out of it, or was it a serious a serious thing like? No, it was always a serious thing in the moment. You'd get a look in that. <laughs> but, you know, not too many, really, because part of it was you, know, you had to Raw. be that good and no one was going to be there in the first place. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm too afraid of getting the look to make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want to be like uh, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, you mess up, you get a, something thrown at you. No, yeah, like, no one was man. ever like that with us. Everyone was... Well, yeah, no, we, we're always fun with each other like that, you know. We'll call it out, but it's all in, in fun. Yeah, exactly. Never like, what are you doing, you piece of shit? You fucked up right there. What the fuck? No, no, we're, you know, that we've all gotten along. Because no one hears it. Yeah, and, and plus we got a sense of humor. Like, the, we know that they don't hear it. We're the only ones right. that hear it. Right, exactly. But we'll joke around, about, you know, about it. We used to do um, little things like add mushroom lines into to certain songs to try to <laughs> make each other laugh up there. <laughs> it's kind of cruel, though, because we're in the middle of a song and you're trying to bust somebody out <laughs> and make them fuck up their part on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I almost broke many times. Um, but it's fun. I mean, you know, like you said, it keeps it interesting. Yeah. You're out there doing it 100 nights a year or whatever, you know, you got to. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean, you know, like you got to take it serious and you're trying to deliver a show and be as, as flawless as you can be. But at the same time, have fun. Exactly. <laughs> there, was a, there was a time. <laughs> this, didn't, this didn't work out. You didn't like this too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we were doing a song and then I'm doing backups with you. But I start, I, I hold my nose and I start doing a nasal. <laughs> You know, like I'm kind of trying to copy yeah. him, but I have my nose, I have my my finger on my nose, I'm right? plugging on my nose, and this guy is with the mic and he's doing his lyric, and all of a sudden he's doing, does his lyrics, still doing it, and looking at me like, what the <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck the fuck up? I was just doing it for shits and giggles, just trying to fuck him up. <laughs> he was saying some people. I was, I was. Oh, I was going to at it. I should have just let you go. Oh that man, man. Awesome. you looked at me, and, and that shit made me laugh because you looked at me so serious, like what the? And you were still doing the verse too, and you just turned around, and looked at me like, like real slow. <laughs> if looks could kill. Oh man, that was funny shit. Uh, I was in my prince moment. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Here? Oh man, did you see? Uh, there's a there's a a video out there right now that 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 um it talks about. A, a certain thing with with Michael and Prince, right? And uh, it started off with James Brown was doing a performance, and Michael Jack Jackson happened to be there. He calls Michael on stage, and Michael goes up, and he's and they're hanging out, and they're doing some shit. And then he tells um, James Brown to call Prince up. You know, it, like James Brown, w like wasn't even considering that he was just calling michael jackson up but he insisted that he call prince up so he calls prince up prince up goes prince comes up he grabs a guitar he's playing with the group and then he starts fucking with the crowd and it, it was it was kind of weird but cool at the same time that you got these three guys yeah. on stage um but then it turns into a story how like michael just would i mean uh, prince just would not fuck with michael like he didn't like uh it was over uh what song was it bobo uh bad bad yeah yeah over the line uh your butt is mine but that was supposed to be a, a duet it's supposed to be a duet but prince didn't want to do it because he didn't like the opening line he, he didn't want to sing that to michael and he didn't want michael singing that line back to him no fucking way Right, your, your, your butt is mine. Like, oh, yeah. who's whose butt are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and then they yeah, say, but... and then there's a story how like, um, Prince wouldn't like. He wouldn't. He wouldn't like talk with Michael there. They would. He like would not like do anything with him. And 
somehow he finds out that Prince is playing somewhere and he goes to the gig with Chris Tucker and and some other people and I guess you know he like Prince sees everybody at the table Chris Tucker uh, Michael and and whoever else was with them and he mentions everybody but Michael right and then I guess this night he's playing bass or maybe he was playing guitar. I don't know. The way Chris Tucker says it is he's playing bass. And other people describe the same thing, is that he's playing a bass and he, and he walks through the middle of the club and he's playing the bass at Mike, like totally fucking with him. Holy and shit, then he dude. walks back to the stage, but he never shouts him out. And uh, it's, it's just crazy, like the, the type of relationship those guys had and wow. didn't have. I didn't even know they knew each other. That's yeah. amazing. It seemed like Prince didn't want to know him. Mike wanted to know Prince, but Prince didn't want to even wow. indulge Mike for anything. It's all the best. I, I've, the best. I've heard stories where well, I was reading this book on the Prince, and it was saying that sometimes Prince would just like call uh, Michael Jackson and just play a beat, like play a song. Like a few minutes of the song, then hang up. <laughs> like you know, this, sounds like something he'd do. You know, some some shit like that. You imagine and Michael. Ooh, my, Michael like, <coughs> I don't know why he does this. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is he like this with me? <laughs> wow. Want to be friends? You know, he did. He genuinely he wanted did. to be wanted friends to be and friends. collaborate with him, but yeah. Prince was like, nah. No fucking way. Like they they and and there was a story uh, that they tell. Lionel Richie tells it that when they did uh, We Are the World, they asked Prince to come to come do it. And he was asking for a separate room. He wanted to do his all his shit in a separate room. And 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 Lionel was like, but you know, everybody's gonna be there. You know, everybody's gonna be in I can't like I can't get a separate room. We're all gonna be in one room. And uh, you know, he he thought that mentioning some names would be the thing that locked him in like yeah man you know um bruce springsteen's gonna be there diana ross michael's gonna be there and he he noticed that the tone changed when he said michael's name and he goes well you know i could if you give me another room i could i'll i'll play guitar on it i'll do a solo and he just was not having going that he was not having it he had to have his own room he didn't want to be with no one else especially not mike and lionel richie says okay let me see what i could do and never called him back and just did the song without prince because they wanted him on it. he was just being mad difficult and didn't want to be next to michael or he didn't want to be next to anyone but he definitely didn't want to be next to michael Uji. and he because he knew michael wanted to be next to him and not in some weird way, just he wanted to collaborate with him. I, you know, I think he, he respected him and wanted to do a collaboration, but the Prince was just not having it. That would have been some collaboration, man. They're the two best right? I can think of. You know? Absolutely. That would have been, it would have been crazy to hear what that Imagine would have they, like. they would have come up with. Yeah. Well, you know, Prince was Prince. Yeah, he was, he was the best I ever saw. Two geniuses right there. I could, I could, I could see, you know, him w not wanting to be in any sort of shadow of, because you know, no matter how big he was, he would have been in the shadow shadow of Mike, because mm. Mike was like at the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Prince could have been the world, but Mike's the universe at that at that point in their careers, I think. Oh yeah, wow. Mike was definitely bigger at that time. That's what I meant by the world. He was just a, a world star, like everywhere. He was tremendous. Well, so was Prince, he but was like not to the level, Mike but was. not to the level. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't mean he was a better artist. It's just that popularity. He touched a broader genre of people. That they were they were both mm -hmm. dope in their own way. Oh yeah, like you know, but mm -hmm. like yeah, people held. I mean, you know, you don't get labeled the king of pop for nothing. You know what I mean? That's because that's I mean that was Mike's label, the king of pop. Which he was for a very long time. All right. Uh, that being said, let's. Um, it's it's that time. This is where we get tortured, Slim. People send food, scumbags. Nobody ever orders a pizza. Uh. <laughs> 
Don't cry, Bobo. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, fuck. I feel like I could have taken two of those pills, b real. Oh, just wait. You're still not. You're still not 100% feeling it yet. Trust. It takes time. A couple it takes hours. takes time, sure. yeah. It took me three and a half hours. This is the attitude that got me in that Disneyland. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it You're going to be in Disneyland in about an hour. All right. No, but I overdid it that day. But th- this. Oh, you overdid it today. I, would, I, would, I don't think I overdid it. I feel great. I, I just feel cold now. <laughs> I don't feel cold I don't at either. all. I'm in a t shirt. All right, next. All right, first one up here of the day. We got Bart's Barbecue with a new menu item at the Lomita ah, Ale House. Right. Good stuff. This the, is a real the smoked chili chicken oh, chili burrito. verde. Oh, my God. That looks delicious. And a burrito. <laughs> what a Good stuff. This is a real chili verde breakfast burrito. Chile verde. This shit sucks. Oh, that's a breakfast burrito. That's how it should be made. Oof. It's my breakfast that's a, burrito. That's a breakfast burrito. And, and let me tell you that. That's delicious. I could already yeah. tell. Man, that's yeah. when you sleep. Oh, that's porn right there. Ah. That is. Ooh, that's see, that looks sleep. good. Food porn. Yeah, yeah what do you mean breakfast? I'm going right back to bed after that fucking day. Yeah, that's going right to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you need to split that. Yeah, you're Serious. jumping in the portal after this. Yeah, man. for sure. Yeah, we're going that's down. a Saturday breakfast. We're going down like the camera equipment when you knocked it over, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I see what you did there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he whispered it to it. it was, yeah, he, did. he didn't even yell for help to no one. <laughs> ah, fuck! He kept, help all, me. He kept it all to himself. <laughs> he would have been. He would have been going. He would have been going out in front of those briskets. In front of those briskets. <laughs> hey, because the, the, the <laughs> hey, le- listen, listen. Before we get to the next one, no one's hit the Mega Million lottery yet. New number zero three zero oh, two twelve twenty eight sixty seven. <laughs> Thank you. 10% you're giving me if these numbers hit. Next. <laughs> put, a, put the video of him with the weights. <laughs> this could be the new Godfall. Hold on. Give me, give me a couple minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you slow down over there. And we got Dean Jones up in here saying a burger my son had the other week at the local pub That's down right. in Australia. Wow. Damn, that looks like Damn, Red Robin, Robin, though. That's a hell of a stack right there, buddy. Damn, and then mm. those are some papas right there. Look at those fries. Oh, that cheese, God. dude. That's a cunt of a sandwich right there. Whoa. <laughs> It's in Australia. <laughs> that means it's good. Speaking of cunt. <laughs> um, <laughs> wrong timing. Yes, wrong time. Speaking <laughs> of cunt. On the 30, right? When we got to the 30 mark, yeah. um, Slim was answering it, something that Bobo asked him, right? He's like, um, <laughs> I can't remember exactly. But he was question, said, man. all I ever wanted was, and, and then, then you said it. cunt at the same, <laughs> by, the same yeah, time. Yeah. I, I caught it. Like, you, notice. if you go to the replay on <laughs> at, at 231, <laughs> you will hear this. It's hilarious. I didn't, I, I didn't I laugh. I saw you look oh, over at me. That's why yeah. I what wow. I did. Because your timing, timing with his question <laughs> that he was answering was like... <laughs> Like that. It was hilarious. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> and we got Donnie up in here with a little shredded barbecue chicken sandwich. All right. That looks, man. What a, what a, put more chicken, man. Would you use Wait, what's like, that? Just, okay. You're asking, what's the white stuff? Yeah, yeah. Cabbage. Pro- right. Probably cabbage. Bitch ass cabbage, right. dude. Right. I just wanted to ask first <laughs> like before cabbage. I say, what, what, what you guys my dude got, It's my, not white. My dude got a pinch of cabbage. <laughs> yeah, one, one cabbage, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's the healthy part. You know, I don't know. That, this, one, this one doesn't look appealing to me. Yeah. You, you even more chicken, man. Would you use a tender? This shit looks like the sandwiches they give you at church when they don't like you. <laughs> Slightly more chicken. Um, yeah, <laughs> you using can, like a tender there, man. It just throws me off the... The cabbage? The cabbage thing. Like, you decided to put, like, 10. Can I have one unit of cabbage, please? To each his own. <laughs> I will say, every time I make pulled pork sandwiches, I always put on a bunch of slaw on the sandwich. Just, you didn't have well, to get it on. For, you're thing. from Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's how I actually learned it from out here. When I went to a farmer's market Don't out claim here. that. Get out of here. No, no, dead serious. When I went to a farmer's market out here, the lady here. that was making barbecue out. sandwiches, she would put slaw on top of it. I've never had that before. All right. She, she, came she wasn't here. from here. She wasn't, she wasn't from, from here. No, she was. That's what you say. Did you get her number? No. Oh. And we got Gustavo <laughs> up in here saying some chicken with mushrooms and potatoes. All right. Uh, a lot of rice. <laughs> I need to, a little more chicken. Slim Jim, is this anything appealing? To you up here? 
I ate vegan for the last time. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, damn. All right. So none oh, of this is looks appealing. good, yeah. He's like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been vegan? Uh, quite a few years. I, I, I gave up the the cows and the birds and that a very long time ago, but um, vegan, more or less three, four years. I'm holding you vegetarian. You know, 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, have you have oh, you noticed though. that the menus uh, like the the options have gotten better over sure. the years? And I think you know vegan is kind of hard to do. I think it's Fuck, yes, hard, it's very hard. Hard, <laughs> hard to to uh, butter. But hard to I think make more than to get into it. I think is kind of easy because there's so many flavors out there. There's right. So many things that the. But as a chef, it's so tough. Have you been to Crossroads? You know a few of the vegan spots that are I've know, heard of beautiful it. ones. Yeah, there's um you know the few that we know. I think it's as good as anywhere. I've had some really good vegan food. It's just like finding the really yeah, good vegan exactly. Food. Yeah, exactly. And like that vegan style soul food, you know, you can get it. This place is in Hollywood. Yeah, that make sandwiches that look like. Oh, I gotta try that. that. You know, oh, I know the scenery. spot you're talking about in Hollywood. They make like like they make diner food. Kind yeah, of. yeah, Doomies. It's Doomies. Yeah, it shout yeah. out. It's on Vine Street. But there's all you know. There's gourmet type uh, restaurants. There's a great Italian called Pura Vita. That's our friend West Hollywood. Crossroads, Melrose, another one. But it seems like there's even if you want to go to Veggie Grill, it's all it's yeah. it's like a vegan Burger King. Kind you know, of good options you know, out there. Monty's yeah. Burger. You know, Monty's, yeah, like, Monty's they, is good. They do a great vegan. You know what you know, I what I wish they would in and out style. They burger. would perfect is the cheese, bro. I just that just can never get sold on the vegan cheese. I'm just like yo, it's a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. 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 Start off slow. Start out by having a you know vegan chicken sandwich with slaw. Yeah, get slaw. <laughs> next one <laughs> right next and we got edward up in here showing off his christmas tree saying may the force be with us all all right awesome. grogu as the top all right a nice baby jesus right there dude i like that nice bj i saw somebody put that dress on the baby jesus statue it was kind of good <laughs> okay and we got fabio up in here saying here's my inside out roll all right Light that on fire. Smoke. How do you know it was inside out? Where's the thing? He already burned it. Yeah. Oh. You could tell by the top. That's good. That's pretty damn good for an inside out back roll. Well done. They got they it's call kind it. of advanced, man. Yeah. Gone are the days where it's a Twisted up piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, easy one. It yeah, was, yep. you know, big bamboo. Big bamboo. Big, big bamboo. bamboo. But yeah. they were thin, man. Yep. <laughs> they were just wide he as hell. Had to reach the point where you could do a bamboo. Yeah. Because those who weren't that great would use easy wider because they were a little yeah. bit thicker. Yeah. A little, little more texture. Yeah. But now I see you got filters in them, and it's you know, it's oh yeah, works yeah. of art, man. Oh yeah. Awesome. And we got a uh, let's see here. We got Space High up in here showing off his hash hole. The ha that's a nice looking yeah. hash hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this, this, this <laughs> Jim, that means that there's hash in the center of this joint. Does it look blurry? This is just what they call these joints hash holes because yeah. there's a there's hash a, a in the middle. Does it look blurry too? It's a little blurry. The okay. picture is. Yeah. It's a little blurry because it caught yeah. the background the instead of that. Yeah, the tree. The that. tree's more in focus. But like, um, roll to the next, son, and then let's take the elevator up. Great. You can't really see any um can't judge it. No shark bites. No shark bites. <laughs> there might be a squeeze or two here and there, but like you really can't tell. Looks good. I'm gonna give that an eight. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> nice I give smile. that tree an eight too. Yeah, I'll give that tree, tree a nine. <laughs> yeah. Well done. It's nice frosted nice. just enough. It's not over frosted. Yes. <laughs> That's what your nostrils would look like on the inside after partying. <laughs> Wow! Is that yeah? That, yeah. There's all the hairs and shit, and then no. Man. Your look, your, yours looks like a frosty Christmas tree. <laughs> so you got two of those. Need, oh my god! <laughs> you need a trim. You need a trim, buddy. <laughs> you need that trim. Trim man. that tree. Trim that. And we got Brandon, you the UPS guy here, saying this is what we go through this time of year. Oh my god! Oh. Yeah. Wow, 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 shout out to them. They're the MVPs, though. Yeah. You are the MVPs. I gave like three of them weed already. Well, shout out to the scumbags <laughs> who steal fucking packages. Fuck you. Oh, man. Well, you know, but you don't have to shout them out, Caddy Blaze. Yeah. <laughs> they deserve it. They're pieces of crap. The ones who steal them? Yeah, fuck Yes. Them. Yeah. But they, the ones who are like course, doing the job. Hell yeah. Salute Thank to y'all. So oh, since so you give the UPS guy weed, you know, 
you're going to get all your packages. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to get it. It's his. not even sometimes them. It happens before, before them. Yeah, yeah, but you got oh, yeah. you got to just hook them up, bro. Like, think about yeah. it, bro. Like, it, they, they know, like, they, they show up. They're bringing, if, listen, if you bringing hook them, your, your inventory. If you hook them up, they go out of their way yes. to make sure your shit right. comes comes through. Because you, you got that they, secured. Yeah, but if yeah. you don't give a shit, they're like, it's whatever. It's random. Like, if they got it, cool. They're Dude, not looking for it. Don't tip the mailman that way, though. It's federal. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Oh, man, right. it's too late. It's good to know. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. No. I think you still got to give him a, yeah. you know... Seize candy boxes. That, that dude, yeah. that, that dude definitely bribe him. And he, and he was happy as hell with those gummies. He was like, for real? I was like, yeah, the man. Yeah, you, keep, you keep the mailman happy with them edibles, man. baby. Yeah, yeah he exactly. was like stoked. He was like, are you serious? I was like, yeah. I was like, it's not even open, bro. Man. He's like, I can't do this on my job. I was like, for afterward, dude. Man, but, you know, give, give him a Globito next time. Nah, that, he, he's going to impair him. He can't. He, he's got to sit down. He got mail to deliver. They're real Santa Claus. <laughs> I got some gel cap for you, buddy. <laughs> next. And next up in here, we got DJ Goat showing off the hash hole as well. Oof. What is man, that? wrap what? it with a paper. What man. is that though? Is that like a like? Is that like? He's Cohiba? got the filter that's, right here. That's and a right there. Oh no, but is how did he God. roll that? Like what? I would th say he packed it. But then again, I don't know. I can't really say that he packed it. Brought to you by circle because K. because you couldn't get a hash hole by packing it. He picked it, then no, packed it. No, you couldn't. <laughs> he picked it, packed it, fired it up. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, it's it's um it's it's one of those. Uh, yeah, he used the uh, the I mean, tie sticks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But he just wrapped it around. All right, Shh. enjoy, uh, baby. But uh, listen, um, if you're gonna do a hash hole, like. Do a paper one, man. I don't like. You know, I, I think that's hemp, though. It's not real. It's not. That's. It looks way different. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're forgiven. Next. <laughs> and next up in here, we got Space High saying thank you so much to E Zone. Hell yeah! You're welcome, dog. Thank you for uh, buying up all the stickers. Flavorsbyezone.com. Awesome. And we got get that little clown one with the Dawn's tank. <laughs> the best one. And we got New Pac up in here saying. It ain't much compared to others, but Spotify knows you're my top choice. Shout out to Cypress Hill. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. you we appreciate the time you listening. <clears throat> That's what we make it for. Awesome. And we got Joe Para up in here saying Snacks came by to my house to see me. My house? My house. Snacks <laughs> is an intruding son of a bitch. He, he doesn't oh, call. He don't <laughs> care, dog. He don't care. Look at him. He knows it too. He's looking at. He's like he's come, sizing you up. He's like, come here, get under my wing, son Great of a bitch. bitch. Well, I would have been throwing popcorn. He's at like, that I'll boat. show you something. <laughs> he's got a crow. Oh, he's got a crow down there. Yeah, yep. his foot in his claws. Yep, Crony. in his talons. Holy shit, dude! Oh yeah, he's like, hey, let got me eat this got crow. Cheryl. He's yeah. like, fuck off, let me eat this crow in peace, you son of a bitch. He's got Sh Cheryl. He's showing his more brutal <laughs> side. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's a blackbird. No, it's a crow. Are you sure? That's like a small crow, baby. Holy shit, Because a black dude. bird looks like a little ass crow. You would think for all the money he made with LAFC that... Nah, it's a crow. He wouldn't be doing these things. Yeah, you would think no. Snacks has enough money. <laughs> well, you can't go vegan, dude. Oh, come on, Snacks. All right, Snacks. Like they have to eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he caught you in the act, son. This is our resident hawk. Snack. Or hawk. It's a hawk. A resident hawk. There you go. That's a hawk for sure. <laughs> and we got Smokestack Mac up in here saying, I'm pretty sure I'm one of the biggest high and hungry candles oh uh, collectors God. in the world. God damn, dude. Thank you so much, Smokestack Mac. This fool has all of them. I, I do have two new ones coming out. That'll make them like almost 18 cents. He's got a whole lot of cents. Oh, His house must so smell good, though. I'll tell you yeah, that dude. much. Or it smells like shit, and he's constantly got to burn candles. Well, I wanted to give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, you know. Wow. Just joking, man. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> All right. It's covering. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's covering up. Man. <laughs> the mask. Is cooking it. mess. <laughs> covering yeah. it. To be fair, your house doesn't have to smell for you to light up a candle every now and then, you know. Just clean the house and then light it. Light but it if up. you are cooking meth, it will help cover the smell, so. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Fair and we enough. got Smokestack Mac back up in here again, showing off some snowmen. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. That's, that's got to be a mold. No, man. That don't got to be a mold. Man. That's pretty goddamn good. Out there, man. Yep. 
Aton, like Aton style. would be hugging that. Aton would there'd be a it, hole in the. Aton bag. would be like, Here, here's Aton. <laughs> oh, can I take it home? Yeah. Oh. Don't fuck him while you eat it. <laughs> yeah. Or he'd be like, Yo. That's the Ghostbusters. I'll sock that one. Stay puff. That's scary, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is good to stay puff. Nice work. It's a lot of work. It is. It's a well lot of work. Done. A lot. It is well done. And we got Jackie up in here saying she saw the sticker all the way in New Mexico. Shout to High and Hungry. Hell yeah! Shout out to all the people out there repping New Mexico. They, they, I got, they got people out there. They're out there buying stuff. And now stop by a uh, Vaporium Gifts in New Mexico. They got three different locations. They carry High and Hungry candles. Boom, bang. Awesome. And next up in here, we got Mac Blagic made this for E-Zone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Nostradamus. That is pretty hilarious. That, that is was, good. That was me a couple minutes ago, hours ago. Globito. Glo el, el Wait, globo. Were you at Tank Tone? There was still some uh, Hank left. <laughs> I'm going to get a text right now. Watch. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Wilfred Cyrus up in here all the way from Michigan saying, check out our mother's stock for the upcoming projects on the farm. Nice. All right. Very nice. Nice mother stock. Get all them hoes. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Exactly. He's the uh, submitter that would send us like those giant cannabis fields out in Michigan like every summer. Yeah. You know him, Colton, or what? Prepping, nope. prepping <laughs> for the next lot. <laughs> He's always just working. These girls look good. That's right. Full time job. And let's see. We got MB up in here saying concentrates never tasted better. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is that the, this? Yep. Sure is. Stunden. Oh, no, Dr. I, 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 edition. Get yourself a hire to go with that. Is you're... that what this is called? Yeah. Yep. Get yourself a hire I from. Need that in my life. Too. Get yourself a hire from G Pen to add to this particular piece right here. If you're into concentrates, um, and it's gonna make it's gonna change your life. I mean, if you're using this for flour, cool. But we always suggest for concentrates. Straight up. But congratulations. It's a good investment. Nice buy. And we got Zachariah up in here saying, a pic of me and my baby boy. Hope y'all had a Merry Christmas. Congratulations, uh, mine. Yes, sir. Congrats, Congrats brother. <laughs> Look at that. Baby, yeah. like, hey, what's going oh, on? The happy oh, man. Where am I at? Future How champion. That's right. That's dope. Mm, cheeks. Start swinging on me. Hey, now. No, the baby, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, get this camera off me, fool. And we got Brandy Otto up in here saying, hey, guys, this is your biggest fan on the show. Shout to Noel. Hey, Noel. Probably watches the show. My dogs yeah. love TV. Oh, my cat like, loves TV. Oh, that's, a nice, that's a nice looking dog. And there's, what is it, a Yorkie? Yeah. Right? That's Yorkie. a Yorkie. That's a Yorkie. A New York. Looks like a happy dog. Yeah, it does. Yorkie. Yeah. Happy dogs Excellent. are good dogs. Mm -hmm. And we got the Inner Realms up in here saying he's rolling up some gelato at number two. All right. Nice choice. Looks good, too. That shit does look flavorful. I would have it. Bring it. And we got Jason up in here saying, I wanted to show off what it is that I work with. Eastern Red Cedar. It's a beautiful and has its own personality, and the finish just brings it out. Make us a table, bro. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, so That's nice. nice. Looks yeah. like Redwoods. Looks, yeah, where's yeah. he at? Looks great. Tell him to make like a crazier sure, one. Sure, it's expensive. Almost all Redwoods. A global though. table. And they said Eastern Redwoods, so obviously yeah. it's different than the ones we have. The table we had made up out there, which Bill had made up, is like from some Texas oak or something like that, and that shit was expensive. Mm. So yeah. Anything handmade like that is oh, yeah. going to be yeah. Cost you money. And that color costs money. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we got one happy mom up in here saying, check out these kids trying to rock the bus. <laughs> Rob? Or rock? Trying rock. to rock oh. the bus. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Good kids. 
It's their job. They're trying to get it through the snow. At least they're smart enough to do this. They're trying to, yeah, they're trying to get it through. Come on. Go home. Go on now. Kalamazoo. They're trying to go home. Like, get trying to get home. Kalamazoo, yeah, Michigan. Don't want to freeze in that damn bus. Oh. Oh. There you go. Come on, kids. Oh. Come on, one more little. Oh. It would work better if your scumbag parents came out and helped and push. <laughs> Instead oh. of filming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Somebody scumbag parent. <laughs> No, the person filming is like, that's why I ain't got no goddamn kids. <laughs> they don't have the yeah. bus rolling in chains. <laughs> He's in the I'm video sorry. saying, wear a condom. Yeah, why isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You would They're think prepared, in this. You, you think in that kind of stuff. The bus snow, is very prepared for chains. this, huh? That part of the country. Right. You need chains. Yeah, you yeah, would absolutely. think that they'd be rolling with chains already in this, you know. Hey, it'd be snowing there. Kalamazoo. That's not, not prepared. All right. I was going to say, though, like, they, they all salt the roads and everything, so a lot yeah. of them don't have chains or don't even use chains. Well, they fucked up on that one. Yeah. New lottery number 03-20-12-28-68. 10%. We got Jason up in here saying family time at Disneyland. <laughs> yes, sir. That's Rocking right. the insane. Oh, all right. Hell yeah. That's nice. I'm a, as soon as it starts raining, I'm finna pull up. Dog life. Is it cheaper when it rains, or is it because it's less people? Well, right now, because I the, like the homie that works there, like there's all the reservations are taken up. Like it's very it's very hard. People had done it for months because it's December, but every time it rains, like people are like fuck the rain. They get all scared, so you got to be on it. So every time I check in the morning, and like sometimes you get lucky, and then he's able to like use his pass and you know get us in again. All right, shout out to you, Caesar. Don't be throwing names out there. They don't There's know probably like 9,000 Caesars. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's like 9,000 Caesars <laughs> out there. And we got CK Nug showing off a little hash ball. Nice. Oh, that's nice. That's nice temple nice. ball. Yep. Beautiful. <clears throat> that's pretty good. Purdy, man. Man, that shit does look pretty. Excellent. Got freckles and everything. I don't ever see hash around too much anymore. It's there. You got it. I found a picture of like uh, a straight hash puck, like, it will, like at, a, at a cannabis event. Like seven years ago, no, like five years ago, and I'm just like, damn, they don't make this shit no more. They do. It's they just do. not popular. In Europe, it's still the biggest thing. Oh, yeah. Red Leb. Huh? Yeah. Red Leb is what I remember. Red Leb. Red Lebanon, yeah. yeah. They still make good hash. It's just, yep. it's not popular here in North America the way that it is overseas Europe. and whatnot. You got some Cali Blaze? What? I can just make it. It's easy. It. Yeah, it's not that yeah. hard. People want it more refined these days. Like, that's. They want the light blend. color. They want, like, there's, there's still a ton of plant material in that, so it's not well sifted. So That's six star, though. Know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? definitely yeah. full melt for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's quote unquote six star. I think that was blonde leb, too. Yeah, blonde exactly. leb. that's what it was. Yeah, the blonde, the blonde. Lebanese. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ring it. That was always good. That hash tasted really good. Yep. Told them. Smoke. And we got a Aton sent this in. This was the Chicago airport over Christmas, the Oof. luggage area. Oh, oh man. Oh, my. Bro. God. Wow. What the fuck? Yeah, man. Talk about an overwhelming job if you're one of the baggage Holy guys. Cool. Look at that. What the yeah. fuck? Holy shit. I look like a mosh pit of <laughs> luggage. Hell. A Romstein concert. Yeah. Of, of Are you waiting concert. around to get your luggage for that? Ugh. I mean, oh there'll be some important God. shit in there sometime, dude. Definitely. Oh, man. But see, like, uh, if you're going to be traveling, I think it's just, that's, that's, just send it. A lot of that is luggage that got stuck, obviously. You know, like Ugh. between like flights that didn't get put on a flight. Mm -hmm. It's just right there. Yeah, It's like the, the, what happened at Heathrow, Start. where there was like 100,000 bags that got stuck there, and they had to oh. ship those bags to different cities. You know, that people were on, on, on trips, vacations. They didn't get their bags for like a month, two months. Probably had And they were stuck gone. in Heathrow. This is like the same damn thing. Start kicking all the luggages. <laughs> pissed off, boy. All God right. damn it! And we got a little just coasting. I, I just can't play too, the audio yeah. on yeah, this. Yeah, don't play the audio. Yeah, this is pretty, um, pretty dope. <laughs> Intuitive. That's just like a fun wheelchair. Yeah, he took one of those one wheel. He's things. got the one. Yeah, yeah, put his little chair on yeah. there. He's got pretty good balance. I'll yeah. say that. This is to keep up. I like it. He's just coasting, son. You just coast until your face plants into something, but yep, it breaks his out. So yeah, like how do you stop? That car door. <laughs> like how do you stop? It's just like a what's it called? A segue. You just lean back. You lean back. Yep. All right. So he just got to lean back, and he's good. Yes. 
until someone hits him, then he's not good. He <laughs> leaned back like <laughs> leaned back like Fat Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's see up in here. The last one up of the day, we got this one. A little turkey fail. I got to move out of Wisconsin. I see the weirdest shit ever. Kid getting chased by a turkey. That's happening in Staten Island right now, just so you know. Just kick the turkey in the chest. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> They're crazy. Uh, the, the, kid, the, car, the car saved the kid. I would have stopped and punched that thing. Oh, right man. Face. For sure. I oh, would. we know Caddy Blaze. But got their phone book. Oh, I would I have kicked him for distance. <laughs> kicked him for distance. Literally, right. By the way, Staten Island is like overrun with turkeys. <laughs> he right said, now. I'll kick the feathers off that. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> kick the shit out of that turkey. <laughs> I'm having you for dinner, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I could see this happening to Aton. Oh, for he's sure. screaming as he's running. His dog will be running next to him, too. He wouldn't <laughs> OG, help oh, me. Oh, shit. Help me, OG. <laughs> I'm it kind of reminds me of that video God. of Bobo getting chased by the birds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. Those even, birds were flying, though. They were, they were flying. <laughs> I wasn't running away like that, though. <laughs> yeah, that little kid's a pussy. Yeah, he's running. <laughs> he looks Mom, pretty small, though. Mommy. Though. <laughs> That's a pretty big turkey, though, for that little kid, though. That's how I was yeah, saying. I was yeah. like, he looks pretty small, bro. Like, he can't. What if he, you know, he life hasn't fucked him up or seasoned him as much, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, that kid is scared because he is running. He's on right his now. wheels. Yeah. He is on his wheels. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I mean, imagine. I mean, he's got the heavy coat on or whatever like that. He's got weight. He is running. Like, he can't, he can't, there's nothing there that he can pick up and start hitting it with. No, you know no, what I'm saying? What happens like, if no. the turkey catches him? He just start pecking him, pecking I guess. Him. Yeah, like flapping. He's yeah, a flapping. Like and geese. Pecking. Geese are scumbags. Yeah, geese. Like, are geese scumbags. will chase you and try to fuck you up. I, I mean, but the, the, the Canadian bastard. The turkey wasn't going to go any faster than this. <laughs> the so, yeah. so the kid. He's in that guy, not to run into the, the kid turkey. might have worked. Yeah. yeah. Just to non divert violent the, ending. Divert the turkey from. <laughs> Oh man, the kids like wait till Thanksgiving. Man, would, hey, man. that kid thought that kid felt like he was in Jurassic Park right there, <laughs> running from a T Rex, <laughs> yeah. a Velociraptor. Some people would sit and argue and say that that is a dinosaur chasing him. <laughs> Will he be very embarrassed when this goes viral? Oh, definitely. The kid. Uh, they can't tell who he is, though. Well, they can't tell yeah. who he is, but he'll always if have a story. If you're his friend, you know who he is. He'll, he'll always have film. a story to tell for his <laughs> whole life. Oh, oh yeah. man, you remember that time I got chased by a turkey? Trust me, if that's... Wait a minute. You're the kid yeah. that ran away from the turkey? Huh. I saw that. I knew that YouTube was that you. Time. <sighs> I was going to say, small town Wisconsin, everybody knows that kid. Yep. Everybody. <laughs> I was about to say, they know the house, the car. Yeah. They're like, wait, I know that. That's Jeremy. <laughs> What See, a that's, pussy. That's yeah. the kid that was chased by the yeah. turkey. Yep. Yeah. That's almost like upstate Minnesota, huh? Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, E-Zone, you want to talk about the new funky drop? He well, doesn't. Oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. No, he's, he's not doesn't. here. No. <laughs> well, we got a new funky drop coming out. We got the Blue Dream Funky. Yeah. Yes. Dropping Friday at 420, coming in the classic fatty and the high roller size. Yes. Yeah. That is very that nice. That is purdy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what do you think so about that, e -Zone? Uh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> I'm taking a piss Oh, okay. my God. Just check, checking on you. <laughs> good answer. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> but go to funkyfieldtips.com, and like we said, it's going to be all three again coming in the classic fatty and high roller size. Get them big boys. Stamped and certified by E-Tank. Awesome. <laughs> Word up. All right, we want to thank you for your submissions. Keep them coming to be real TV contests at gmail.com, and we will run them as we did the ones today. If they don't get on the day you send them, they usually come on the next day. All right, so um, stay rolling with this. If you haven't smashed that like or subscribed yet, please do so now and uh, share out the show and click all notification bells so you can get down with the content we drop Monday through Friday. 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 Eastern on the start. It's all live, no pre-record, none of that. Um, we are here with you, and we appreciate the time you take to uh, be with us and smoke out or sip or whatever it is you're doing. Hopefully safe shit. Um, <laughs> Most likely not. And it is now time for us to open the door to the insane asylum. That means y'all in the live chat, if you got a comment, question, shout-out, suggestion, now it is the time to do it. 
Welcome to the Insane Asylum. Let's do this. First one up of the day, we got Hesh right up in here, and he's saying, I saw Stray Cats a couple years ago. They put on a badass show. Oh, awesome. Where was the show that you saw? They can't respond. Oh. Well, he could respond, but it'll oh, be yeah, delayed. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we try to put on a good show every night. That's just classic. such occasions when someone calls up, you don't know where it was. I can Remember. say with some certainty that it was a great show. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard to say because you know what some folks might think was a great show. As the artist, you might be like, "Damn, we stunk that night," or "We were okay that night," or <coughs> various things. But hey, as long as they enjoyed it, right? Exactly right. Yeah. Hesh yeah. I know said. I did. Heshrat said he just saw them in San Diego at Humphreys at the Fantastic. Bay. Fantastic. Then I know it was good. There you go. Those Humphreys, good shows at Humphreys. That's a cool joint. Have you ever played Humphreys? I think we have. Yeah, some I'm years sure back. you have. You yeah. can yeah. see it from your boat. It's, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a cool joint. Yeah. Oh, thanks for coming out and supporting live rockabilly. And we got Jibby up in here saying rockabilly is my preferred style to drum. All right. Right on, Jibby. There you go. Awesome. Acolytes. And we got I Dr. Zeus up in here saying, tell us about Lemmy since you were in the Lemmy documentary. He died in 2015. Um, Lemmy, he was a rockabilly, 100%. Um, I met Lem in 1980, and he and I were immediate friends. Uh, we stayed friendly all the way. I was with him at the very end, you know. At the very end, I was uh, sat with Lem on the couch. And um, uh, we were pals true pals and then he moved to LA and he moved to uh, right in back of the night right back building. the rainbow yeah <laughs> yeah so he could walk to the rainbow that was his criteria <laughs> for where he lived his neighborhood he wanted and, to be close and is that uh, really why you moved there yeah yeah and and I had already lived right by there myself I can't say I you know, moved there just to be near the rainbow which was probably part of it so he was also my neighbor uh my pal and then my neighbor for the uh, rest of his life and um he loved rockabilly music and we got an opportunity one time to do a track for and uh for an for like a rockabilly tribute album hmm. and um you know of course we did the track in the first few takes and then we had the rest of the day there so lem said let's do this one let's do that one so we did a couple more he said that sounds good Are you open tomorrow uh, to the studio Are you free tomorrow yeah we're free so the long and short of it is that we made two albums wow. uh, um, a few years apart under the band name Headcat, Motorhead, Straight That's Cats, awesome. and um, oh, wow. BMG had, has just done a big uh, like a re-release of some live albums that we did because we used to record the shows and we did two studio albums. So um, you know he was my pal and my true friend, and he was a rock and roll character. I never saw him be out of order. I never saw him be rude. I never saw him anything but be a gentleman yeah. and a you know a good ambassador for rock and roll and I I really loved the guy. He was born Christmas Eve, it was just his birthday and I think today is the anniversary of his passing. So wow. it's a rest know. in peace to a legend. Yeah. Thanks for calling in with that. That's cool. And we got Slater up in here saying you need to learn jazz drums before you play death metal. What are your thoughts? Uh I I think it'd be a helpful thing because it requires a lot of chops. And um, I think if you can do, because there's a fine line with the drums when that, uh, between like a fusion kind of thing and, and that, you know, hardcore uh, uh, <coughs> rock drumming that you're talking about. I, th I think there's a fine line. And I think a lot of those um, heavy duty rock drummer guys are, can, can definitely be jazzers at heart. I think guys like Tony Williams, Billy Cobham, Alphonse Mauzon, Lenny White. There's a few we could talk about that bridge that gap between probably jazz, would, fusion, those are all, and hard. Those are all classic, you know. Probably wouldn't right there. be yeah. surprising that if you asked them that they would say that those were their influences and stuff like that because a lot of those drummers were, you know, when they st st you know, started playing at the beginning, they were influenced by a lot of jazz drums. Mm -hmm. Just because jazz is so, so way out, you know, the yeah. way their style of drumming. And uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of jazz drummers, it turned to metal, man. They're, they're some of the best ones. Yep, I think so. Their pockets are just different. And we got totally. Taryn up in here saying, 
This is for the table for Be Real in the podcast. Guys, have you guys ever thought about going vegan or vegetarian? I've thought about it, but then I think I can't do it. <laughs> I tried it once. It lasts like two months now. Did you get that long? Yeah. That's good. Still, if you made it two months, you should have kept going. I like, I'll do a mix. Like, there'll be, you know, weeks where I'll just, you know, eat regular. Not so much red meat. Cause I, I, I do that maybe once a month, if anything. But, yeah, I'll just sort of mix it up. And uh, sometimes eat vegan and sometimes have chicken, fish, and whatnot like that. But... Yeah. yeah, it's all in proportion, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you go heavy duty with the meats, you know, you're only getting a half balanced diet. You know, you may be getting too much. You might be getting too much. <laughs> like when I was in Argentina, the main mm. food out there is steaks and beef, beef. and yeah. and pasta. So it's like carbs and beef and all that stuff, and you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So you know, you just gotta, I guess. Portion it out if you don't, if you in moderation, don't go, you know, too much to the left or too much to the right if that's your thing. And we got Megan up in here saying, In the early 80s, when I started playing guitar, I really only listened to underground music, metal, hip hop, and punk. But she's saying, The Stray Cats opened my mind. The only band played on the radio that I would listen to. You guys are an inspiration. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It's great to be, have have rockabilly be included in those other genres as being like the only one. And then, you know, the fact that it was the straight cats that helped, uh, helped you get into it. That's, that's cool to hear, Megan. Thanks. And we got Glenn, the Baker up in here saying slim Jim Phantom, the legend stray cats forever. And he's asking which drummers influenced you the most and who are your favorites? Um, we were talking about that a little bit yeah. before. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the original OG jazz cats that you would think, Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, of course, the best of us all, and um, uh, and the rockabilly guys like Dickie Harrell, DJ Fontana, Charlie Connor was a big influence. He was the first guy to play with Little Richard, and you know the famous drum intro, John Bonham, rock and roll, bop it, bop it, bop it, bop it, bop it, It's been a long time. That drum lick was taken from Charlie Connor by John Bonham, who would have told you this, and they do it, bop it, bop You keep it knocking, but you can't come in. You keep it knocking, but you can't. That's the same drum intro that became the most famous rock and show was originally done by Charlie Connor with Little Richard and the Upsetters. And yes. they would have been the first to tell you. John That's Bonham and Robert Plant, they would be the first to tell you that. Yeah, they were influenced by yeah. all those guys. Charlie yeah. Connor, he was a big influence. That's awesome. And we got Darcy Choke up in here saying, I've been rocking Channel 72 and 73 on Sirius XM. That'd be the 50s and 60s channel. Yep. Move the dial down to channel 21, and that's the station I work for, Little Stevens Underground Garage, right here. You're listening to me, your rockabilly buddy, your honest mechanic, Slim Jim Phantom, right here in Little Stevens Underground Garage, doing the rockabilly rave up, right here. Sirius XM, channel 21. Damn, Damn, he did that right there. (laughs) Did that. That's channel 21 on your Sirius XM dial. Nice. Plug life, son. And we got Crazy Maine up in here saying, be real. Yeah. Viperus should do the Super Bowl halftime show. Party one, two, three. No. Ring it. No. <laughs> uh, we don't have the catalog that would um, be complimentary to what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep it clean, and that is... <laughs> Not us. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, with NASCAR, we're going to try to keep it as clean as possible, but I just don't, you know, like, it's uh, maybe, but nah, they would never ask us. You we're, can get we're, drive a car at NASCAR? Nah, it's just our music's too edgy for that. And they're trying to keep it clean, even though football is very edgy. Oh. They're trying to keep it clean with the music anyway, with, especially as it relates to hip-hop. So I don't see that happening. It would be cool. Jay-Z could make it happen. He's the guy. You, know Bring it. you go. You getting on a ride along bureau? They offer it to you. At, I would at the NASCAR. Like if like, they have that one passenger car, they're like, all right. You want if to I could be the one driving, of course. But, but they're not know. gonna do. That's way too fast. 
For who? Uh, well, I'm just saying that if you're, yeah, if you haven't driven that before, maybe like that's. How do you know I haven't? <laughs> dude, those uh, check how fast those cars go. I think that's not. He sounds like a concerned son. Yeah, dude. He's a concerned son. He's a concerned son. He does Thank not you, want son. his. He does um, not want his dad driving those fast cars like that. I'm very lucky. And speaking of luck, new lottery number zero three thirty nine twelve twenty eight sixty. That was just a transition to go into the next. And we got Adrian up in here saying, drumming looks cooler standing up. Reason why I love Bobo's performance is live. He gives the show way more way more energy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I told I mean, him that. Uh, yeah, he showed me. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the thing with drumming standing up, uh, it's a different coordination because, like, when you're sitting down, you know, you're... You know, you're you're more stable, I guess. You know, more grounded. But standing up thing, man, it, it took a minute, like to do doubles on the bass drum or try to do all this stuff. You know, yeah. and not have that that anchor of yeah. sitting down. Exactly. You know what trips me out one knee. is the drummers that like you know they're sitting down and they're doing their thing, and then they get to a move and boom, they pop up out of their seat <laughs> yeah. and standing up like you know that that that's always tripped me out that move. Like that, that they stand up. That's like the, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Don't forget me. Now, if they've killed it, okay, I got you, you know. <laughs> yeah. The stand-up move has always been, you know, like to stand up out of nowhere. Yeah, they want to be seen. They want to be seen. Did you just see that move I pulled? <laughs> see, you didn't have that problem because you was, was right already there standing, standing up. Yeah. They, knew, they knew what was up. Well done. <laughs> All right. And we got Midget Mike up in here asking Slim any crazy stories making Gonna Ball 1981. Gonna Ball, we made that in um, Montserrat. So crazy stories. Wow. I, and it, it was an exotic place, but I remember just being kind of stuck there. It was, uh, it was a place where it was like a small island that they had a recording studio there, Air Studios, and everything had to be brought on and off. I remember waiting like a few days for a guitar string or an echo pedal to come wow. that they want. But um, but I think I would probably have more fun with it now because it's a tropical island. I think I got blown up by a volcano, Montserrat. I'm not quite sure wow. if the studio and the, and the place is still there, but they were owned by uh, Air. Air Studios, George Martin, the famous George Martin. Yeah. Air Studios. And we were sent there in 1981, and I think we just felt kind of trapped there, if anything. But now I think you'd maybe enjoy it. You didn't brace it different experience. Yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. brace it differently. Yeah. Like, I think when you're young at that point, you're seeing that it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the studios you normally work at. Yeah. And then it's like out of the way. It's and just you, sort of like an inconvenience. Yeah, you couldn't walk out and hail a cab. Or go to, we had to go into nightclubs back then. And like this was, you were literally on a tropical island. They had a studio, but we made a good album. That's all there was to do is go in there and Yeah. I, you think work. that's why the, the, that place was chosen so that you guys could c concentrate and not have all the distractions? Yeah. And it, I wish I could remember why. It was so long ago. It was 1981. A bunch of people recorded at that. Yeah, that, 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 that was a kind that was of a, a cool place. We probably yeah. got it for a good rate. And I think after that, we went to Australia or something. There was a like a connecting flight that would line up and you know, all that kind of boring stuff. But we were in Montserrat. And now it's an experience. At the time, it was, what are we doing in Montserrat? <laughs> and I don't even think anyone had a camera. I don't know if there's any pictures from that from those sessions. It's funny, but we were there, and that would have been content we made the for days, right? <laughs> yeah. In these days and times, like just to have that. But n none of us thought about that. I don't think in those no. times, like you know, we we didn't want cameras in the studio. To be honest, like no. it, like at least in the '90s. No. Like a lot of us were like, get those fucking cameras yeah. out of here. So anything you find, pictures of you with some old pals of yours or some ball player you might have been in there, but like it's all kind of by accident in a funny way. Right. Very um, spontaneous and yeah. accidental. You like know, whereas you today, to they're go set. And have the bro shot with somebody, you know, it was all accident. I don't know if any of it was what? planned. Whereas today, it's all set up. Cause they totally. Con what did you call yeah. it? The bro shot? The bro the, shot. Yeah, the bro, you know, like uh, around. Not the bro shot. Oh. Not bro I know, shot. that's like, you know. <laughs> Just, just called it a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, the bro shot. Oh, okay, the bro shot. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, like the shot <laughs> of the bros. Oh. It sounded like bro shot because that means mustache. Oh, bro shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
Prussia and Espanol. All right, next. And next up in here, we got Kicking Fat Beats. <clears throat> He's asking, besides the radio show, does Jim have a podcast? I could listen to this guy talk all day. Um, yeah, Sundays uh, on um, Channel 21 is when I do my thing. Uh, on Sundays, 5 o'clock. Awesome. Channel 21, Sirius XM. And we got Ipsa68 up in here saying, Stray Cats is one of the greatest live bands, and I say this as a hip-hop head. Nice. Ah, uh, well, that's the thing. When you get across to, you know, to genres, to us it makes sense because we know. Right. Like, why punk rockers like country and western or why right. <laughs> reggae guys dig the stray cats or hip-hop guys dig heavy metal we kind of know as musicians it's a similar life and a similar right so we get it so it's still very cool for me to hear that that message is getting across yeah there's a that connection and like more than one thing <laughs> that it's yeah absolutely. You know, so that's a good that's a good message that we always tried to convey and it's good it's getting out there and we got Tuna Fighter up in here saying that they let B drive the NASCAR and he goes to the parking lot and hits Bobo's car. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go straight out to the parking lot and no, no, Bobo's D, lip. D, you, know, you putting that out in the air, you know, Man, you might do it. that for real. I mean, I tell you, when they say, okay, uh, Bobo, you got to move your car because B is about to leave, I run out of the <laughs> studio. <laughs> I run out. So, like, don't you even move. I got, I got, I got, you know, <laughs> I got a bad track record with Bobo's cars. Man. Only Bobo's, though. Yeah, he's never hit nobody else's car. No. Yeah, you lucky. Never liked his cars. Come on, man. <laughs> I think I have, a nice, I have a nice car now. It was just, yeah, I don't want to touch your car. All right. It's all good. <laughs> and we got St. Louis Batman up in here saying, hey, Slim Jim, huge fan. What are your thoughts on the movie Whiplash? Oh, Whiplash is probably the scariest movie I've ever seen. What man? What is that about? It's about it's, uh, heavy duty. <laughs> it's about a drummer and his drum teacher, who's like a talented guy, natural kid, like in a big oh, uh, yeah. music college. And then the the instructor almost tortures the guy. Yeah, half, well, uh, half crazy because he's a he's, son of a bitch. Know, yeah. Because he knows he's really good, and he's trying to get the talent out of him you know and just how hard he works the guy and then it becomes kind of a like a psychological game yeah it's That's all a hard movie for me to watch again it's Man. a hey they both played really movie yeah. i think the guy might have got academy award or yeah, something yeah. for it, like the drum teacher uh uh, J.K. Rawlings. Yeah, he was definitely. J.K. Rawlings. Yeah. yeah, that's a scary movie. Yeah. But again, I love it. It's about the drums. You watch it, but at the same time, I'm like happy that hey, it's not me. He plays a <laughs> bastard. Yeah, like he's not really that guy, but he plays it like. Yeah. Well, in the movie, right? He's, the final scene is yeah, incredible. He's, oh, he's, man. he's just pushing his guys. Yeah. And and, and the people that he thinks are have the potential to be the best yes. he acts like a cocksucker with them but he at heart he's not that guy it seems and they realize that later yeah but they but they but they try to pull his cards yeah he's a cocksuck yeah you know like the way he pushes these people is fucked up you would Dude, love it Callie. i never yeah. seen kind of about to say never seen it it's like Kelly. Like oh plays. Yo, no, no, no. No. yo yo you need to see it you need to see this like right here you would think like based on that picture He's telling you, cocksucker, you yeah. can't play for shit, you God piece of damn. trash. Get off of this kit, like that yeah. type of shit. I mean, he's the his type fingers of guy. are bleeding. He looks like he's just like yeah. Yeah. Him yeah. On more. the type of guy <laughs> that is that he'll ask you about your family, be all nice with it and everything, and then he'll use that against you in things like this like, situations. In where, what situation? Like, oh, your like, like, nice like, like he's trying to play, another. and he says, "Oh, that's part. That's why you suck." That's why your parents never wanted you to do music or like some shit like that. And why your mother's a whore. Something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, but. yeah. It's, it's a fucked up but yeah. brilliant movie. Yeah. Hey, the dude from the side, if you were to add that super long beard, he looks like a Shabo angry at an LAFC game. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. If you're like just yelling. That's random. Okay. But that's true. No, on the other shot. The other <laughs> time. Not like that. That's a good <laughs> shot there. Yeah. <laughs> when he was angry at him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And let's see, I think that was the last one. No, we got Hybrid Cypher up in here saying B and Jim Supergroup could be called Stray Alley Cats. There you go. Or just the Alley Cats. There you go. You had a combination of cats. There was the Tom Cats, the Head Cats, Stray yeah. Cats. There you go. And now we do the Alley Cats. You got to get a cat, though, be real. 
Why do I gotta get a cat? Just to I'll make it just official, Just ad adopt yours, but you know what I mean? Nah, dude, my, my kid, you know, he, he, he's not sociable. All right, cool. <laughs> Flip just like me. That's the great. flipping cats. Flip cats. You gotta get like a star, like a Garfield the star cat. The flipping cats. cats. The flipping cats. I'll help you get a cat if you want. <laughs> but we could do something good. Yeah. I think two stand-up drummers. Ooh. Holy mackerel. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. We could do his it's a lot of beats. Right here. It's a lot of beats. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of beats. The Hillcats. I, I, oh, the Hollywood man. Hill. Oh, oh yeah. the Hollywood Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Put it out there. Yeah. yeah. That's a good name. I man. like the sound of that. Oh my God. Yeah. We are about. We're gonna manifest something now. Yes. Bring it. See, and when 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 Slim Jim is playing, I could be flipping the cats. You know, <laughs> the cat flipping. Cat flipping. Let me design that merch, dude. Oh. <laughs> he said I want yeah. to design the merch. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine what that would look like. <laughs> Hilarious. I can see it right there. All you guys are cats on the hill <laughs> playing music. Mm. God Smoking damn. weed. Uh, I want to shout out everybody that, uh, you know, tapped into the mix yesterday with Psycho Less and myself. We got another one coming tomorrow on Twitch. B underscore Real TV is the place. Make sure you check us out there. We're going to be popping it off for you like we always do, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 Eastern. Uh, so if you got a Twitch account, come join us. All right? And uh, if you don't have a Twitch account and you have a, you know, Amazon Prime account, or a Prime account, as they say, uh, you could utilize that and get a you know Twitch monthly subscription for free, and you could follow us and get down with these mixes. I right? Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, four p.m. Uh, we pop it off. So join us. We invite you all. Share the show out. And uh, man, I want to thank Slim for coming through. Me. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. What a gas coming in after you guys. Yeah, man. I dig it, man. Are you high? No. Oh, do you mean I? I content? think I don't know, man. <laughs> like, are you hungry? Because they usually <laughs> the, that's the good. It's always an indicator. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you don't smoke, that's usually how you know. You're like, how do you feel about drive through right now? If you feel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, now is that a myth or is that true? I think it's no. A, that it's no. A contact high. Is that a myth? I think it's, it's true. It's true. It's man. true. Mm. I think um, I know my clothes will smell. Yes. My wife seems to think it's not true, but we believe it to be true because here's the thing, right? We had Tony Hawk here um, a, a couple years back when we were doing the show upstairs in a, a smaller condensed room where the smoke accumulates and, and sits for a while. Like in this room, um, it, high ceilings, the smoke rises, it doesn't accumulate here. Um, but up there... It it gets smoke thick. box. So he doesn't smoke. He never has. He's never like um. He's never smoked once. And he said that when he left there, or left left the room, he had to um one. He had to go to a drive through <laughs> because he had the munchies. And he after he ate, he had to sit on the side of the road for about twenty thirty minutes so that he could gather himself properly because he was thoroughly high. From the contact smoke, I think um, I think it exists in in some cases, in other cases not so much. And I think some of it, you know, like if you're sitting in this setting and you feel like a contact, I think that's more of your mind yeah. fucking Sebo. with you. Because I think I'll be all right. Yeah, sir, you're because, gonna be fine. Because because <laughs> because this is more of an open space and the, the less um, there's more room for this smoke to like, you know, disperse. Dissipate. Right dissipate there you go so you don't get the contact in here but in a small setting like the room upstairs or what the smoke box the the interview we do in the car with the windows um covered <laughs> yeah that is you know it's hard for anyone to say that 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 they wouldn't get a contact from you know if i have a meet tony hawk now that's my story with him yeah dude did you do that show yeah me too man <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh where'd you go God. burger king oh yeah okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, it's an icebreaker now if I haven't meet Tony Hawk. Totally. He yeah. said McDonald's, though, for he sure. He was yeah, in McDonald's, yeah. yeah. 
Wow. I'll go to Burger King because there's a vegan Whopper. You wouldn't That's even right. know the, the impossible. Really? I've had it. Yeah. I'll yeah. go to the impossible. Yeah. It's actually... Order number three. It, yeah. I don't know. I could, I could taste the difference. Really? I thought it was really good. Though. I thought it was yeah. good. But yeah, it's good, really but good. I taste. I definitely taste the difference. But for me, for me, you have to have it like warm. You can't just have that, you know. Yeah. Cold, yeah, you, yeah, know, you can't. Have then it. you can taste the right. aftertaste. You know, the other things. The laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> lab. <laughs> the lab meat. Mm hmm. They do. They make a lot of the, impo the impossible. And what's the other one? There's like the beyond, beyond. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good for it. I mean, they have a. You know what? They the the one thing that I always found almost contradicting. A lot of people who are like vegan or vegetarian, are also like non-GMO, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want anything modified, but you'll eat f lab food. That one, it just it's yeah. A little, some of you know them what don't. I mean? You know, right? Well, you, I'm pretty relaxed about all of it. You know, yeah. but there's going to be certain. Things that don't line up for sure, but right? Like uh, real vegans, I think they don't even monkey around with the right. I don't think they meats, would, you know. Right. I think it's like what 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 Bobo does when he goes shopping for stuff. Some some like you know they'll scan it to see if it's that lab right. type of shit, or you know a more healthier option, something right. that makes more sense. I told you know people are more uh, con you know conscious of that. For sure, you know, and there's others that don't, you know, they're not even, they're not even paying attention to that. I'm gonna have it because it is. It says what it is, what it is, and <laughs> tastes good, and it's not, a, and yeah. it's not an animal. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, good. Exactly. They have an option. Exactly. Yeah. There's an option for everyone, yeah. which is good. Is that it? That seems to be it. Word up. Uh, all right. I uh, want to thank all y'all for spending this time with us as you usually do. Um, it's all about y'all, man, and the interaction that we have with you guys, man. That's everything. So salute to all y'all. Positivity to everyone out there. And we want to send positivity to my man Slim for coming Thank through. Thank you. Have with him. You got any shout-outs you want to give? I'm going to be in Clear Lake, Iowa on the 4th of February doing the Buddy Holly Memorial. Big concert. Hell yeah. You know, some nice people on it. And I'm going to be on the road most of the next year. A lot of it in England to start with that I know of. That's uh, March. I think we're going to Australia, back to England. This is all my own trio I do, and it's, uh, well, you come, you have a good time. We play the hits and have a couple of laughs, you know? Right now, man. <laughs> when are you going to be playing in L.A.? I got to see. I know there's something in San Diego, I think, maybe in April. Maybe we'll put a posse together. You might have to take that trip. Yeah, I'll we'll need to check oh, that out, God. for sure. Word up. Eric Bobo. All right, catch me on the socials on uh, Twitter at Eric Bobo, on IG at Eric underscore Bobo, on Discord at Bobo's Corner, also on uh, uh, Social Club. And want to thank uh, Slim Jim for coming on through. Honor to, to, to be here with you and talk drums and, and all that. And uh, thanks to everybody that supports the show. Uh, Team Icon represent Eat Motherfuckers. And uh, me and Snacks, we thank you for your support. <laughs> Uh, Bolton. Shout out to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout out to The Dominator. Everybody, don't forget about that funky drop happening Friday at 420. We got the Blue Dream coming in the classic fatty and high roller size. So check it out. Out. Hello, out. Blaze, what's Man. up? Thank you, Slim, for coming through. It was, uh, Thanks, a, a, a lot of information to take in today. Thank you for that. Thanks, uh, shout out to everybody at the table in the chat, uh, fiance, family, everybody who supports us, and uh, see you Friday. <laughs> Uh, nice meeting you, Slim. Thank you, <laughs> Definitely. Buddy. A lot to, uh, like, I learned a lot. Got a lot of Googling to do, you know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, shout out to everybody else who tuned in. Uh, Flavorsbyezone.com is a website. Make sure you guys get uh, the air freshener collection. Uh, same team collection. There's four different flavors, or I'm sorry, four different scents. And the High Hungry Lighters will be going up on the website as well. So make sure you guys check that out. Also, like Colton said, don't forget about the Funky Field Tip Drop. On Friday at 420, and uh, I will be live on Whatnot later, so make sure you guys uh, check me out on Whatnot. I will have a few things on there. It's probably going to be a quick one, so, you know what I mean? Just uh, thank you to everybody who saves uh, the, the things, and I will be back tomorrow. Word up to check this on the replay, Apple Music and Spotify, under the Dr. Green Thumb podcast. Uh, follow us and, you know, check it on the replay if you want to hear this again. While you're in the gym or on the run, whatever you're doing, come get down. And if, when you're in California, visit the Dr. Green Thumbs dispensaries and experience the insane flavors. Salute to um, G-Pen 
for rocking with us on the stunning glasses and the hires. We appreciate y'all and salute to all you out there. All right. And um, remember to love yourself. All right. It's easy um, to burn yourself and uh, shit on yourself like everyone else does all the time. Um, but you must love yourself. All right. You know, keep keep the love for you. Because no one else is going to do that for you. You have to do that. You know, like they say, to love others, you got to love yourself first, right? And uh, a lot of times we're filled with doubt and disbelief of our own self. Get past that. Put love in. Love is the key. Unlock it. Live with it. No boof, no negative energy. Discard that and swallow it. Be real. TV.